everyone. Welcome to another episode of the 5-1 Speedway Show. Hopefully you're all up to date with all the recent uh, episodes, either on the podcast or watching them on YouTube. Uh, the last episode was, was with uh, former world champion Mark Loram. So hopefully you enjoyed the first part of that. Part two of that will be along very, very shortly, hopefully, fingers crossed. But tonight is another England legend, both on the long track, grass track and speedway again. So you're getting two uh, episodes back to back with someone who can do more than one sport. Uh, tonight, my guest is also a crazy legend. Uh, he had a, unfortunately a nasty injury in his career, which sort of hampered it towards the end. But uh, this guy is a legend in the Midlands. But uh, please welcome to the show, Simon Cross. Hi, mate. How are you doing? Evening all. Pretty good, mate. Pretty good. And of course, talking yeah. about a crazy legend, it's nice to see the 84 race jacket hanging up behind you. So Yeah, yeah. It's a, uh, that's just one. I've kept a few here, but... Um, yeah, we've uh, I've got rid of uh, quite a few of them because uh, they were just kept in a box, didn't use them, no one saw them. So, um, yeah, I put them up for sale and I've got rid of uh, every other one. Mm. Yeah, it's just nice to see it hanging up there with pride more than anything. I'm sure the Crady fans would love to see that. <laughs> yeah, we, 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 uh, there's a few here that are special to me. The, the Weymouth one, 83 Cradley, mm. uh, 84, we've got overseas final, World Pairs in 88. Mm. Uh, Sun Bright Lions were my world final one. Uh, was it long track? British, no, British final. Yeah, so we got a few around. Yeah, yeah, you've got quite a few. Train. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's good. It yeah. should be. <laughs> but um, so, how's your um, year been during the pandemic? Has it all been uh, good, bad, or okay? To be honest, mate, it's not really affected us. Um, you know, yeah, we, we've had restrictions. Um, yeah. We're still we're still under under lockdown. We can't go out after seven o'clock uh, mm. till six o'clock in the morning. Uh, other than be it uh, going to work mm. uh, for you know people working in hospitals, etc. Um, so uh, yeah, it's it's been pretty much the same. We've obviously missed not being able to go back to the UK to see family and them come to us. Generally, we have a house full during the summer, but uh, so that's been pretty quiet. Thankfully, we've got like Zoom, Facebook, uh, FaceTime, uh, where we can we can keep in touch. Exactly, and also keeping in touch with like the Speedway world a little bit on Twitter and uh, Facebook and and things like that. So it's all good that you can keep in touch with everybody uh, like any way possible really nowadays. Yeah, it's great with uh, with Twitter. You know, I'm always having a quick look every day, and uh, Instagram. Mm. So uh, yeah, it's it's good to to see what's going on. Uh, it's more, as you said, it's it's more keeping in touch with everybody. Just check everything. Everybody's okay, mm-hmm. um, and then find out what's what's new, and just just having a laugh and joke between between everybody. Yeah, best way to be, especially in these times at the moment. You've got to have a laugh, you've got to have a joke, and, and look back and not like, convene old memories and things like that. Because I'm sure you've been you've chatted to someone like the likes of Eric and uh, people like that from the old days. Yes, but uh, Eric, uh, it was last year. Eric phoned me up. Well, he actually messaged me, and I'm like, okay, how, how you doing? <laughs> uh, so he says, oh, Crossy, what 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 are you up to? You're going to the uh, there's a, a grass track on the European grass track in France. And I'm like, no, uh, why is that? <laughs> uh, and it was, uh, it turned out it was an hour down the road from us. Mm. But um, yeah, anyway, he, he said, well, he's going over helping out some uh, some young dame uh, and wanted to uh, see if we were going. So we said, yeah, Andrea and I said, yeah, we're up for it, we're going. So in the end, we um, uh, we met up in a hotel after after he, he, he bugged me. I mean, basically it consisted of are you going? Yes. And the next message was, having a problem booking this hotel. Can you do that? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, get back to him. And so I booked that. Then there was something else. And, and yeah, I was like his private secretary. <laughs> so uh, we we went down, stayed in the hotel the night before, which was which was good fun. Great to catch up with him. Um, also, Marcel, Marcel Gerard was, was there. So we went out for a meal, talked about engines, talked about old times. Um, and uh, and then we Eric next day Eric went off to the to the grass track. Uh, we were going to go, and then we we decided not to, so we we just came home then. Mm. Well, no, it's just nice to see people. Of course, hopefully, uh, when the restrictions in France and everywhere else are lifted, you can finally meet up with everyone again and just have a beer and have a laugh again, but this time in person. Yeah, uh, we are we're based near Marmande and, and Lariel, which are the only two meetings we go to. 
Mm. Uh, and that is just to catch up. It's not to watch. I mean, sometimes you can ask me who won at the end of the night. I've not got a clue. I mean, <laughs> we don't know the riders now. We know their parents or their grandparents. You know, <laughs> they're, they're that young. So, so we go to meet up with people, mm. um, have something to eat, have a little drink, and uh, have, have have a good night. I mean, yeah, we do watch a few races and uh, see how how things uh, are progressing. Mm. Do you enjoy going to speedway and watching and things like that, or do you like just there? I say just to catch up. It's just to catch up. Mm. I've I've very little interest at all with the with the racing, you know, and um, you know, from right through from the age of six when I started, you know, until I was like 30, 33, I think the last time I rode a bike, you know, that's enough. Mm. So, um, but as I say, it's good. To, it's good. To, you meet a, uh, a lot of good people along the way, um, and it's great now. If I can go to meet, so you can chat with the supporters. Mm. You can have, have a turn. It doesn't matter who it is. You're not. You're not busy uh, going for the next race or dashing off to another meeting. You've got time to spend with them, which is uh, which is good also. Yeah, because obviously uh, the lifestyle of a spear rider, grass tracker and long tracker, you know, it's not very, exactly the quietest lifestyle in the world, in and out of airports and everything yeah. else. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, the, it was, uh, it, it got very hectic. Um, yeah, I mean, one, one, one of the seasons, it was, I think I did like about 130 meetings. Mm. Um, and it was, you know, consistent of in the, in the, the uh, with Craigley and then in Sweden with Spindana, uh, Nesno in Poland, mm. and in McGrath tracks and long tracks. Um, not a lot of time was spent at home, which wasn't good. Um, at the time, I mean, we, we, we'd already got uh, one young son. So, uh, yeah, he missed, missed me a, a little bit for the first 12 months, but, uh, and it, you know, it, it was okay after that. Yeah, but at the time, obviously, it's a job at the time and things like that. And fortunately, you know, it pro you probably had a family at the right sort of time and your, your own personal life and your, your career and things like that. So you managed to spend time with them later on when they're probably still young. Yeah, I mean, uh, what was we? Uh, we had done when we we were, I was 23. Mm. Um, so it's it still, it was a very young age. Mm. Um, yeah, we, we, we planned on having more pr pretty soon after and then, we got to, uh, that was in 1988, mm -hmm. Dan was born. Um, and of course, I had my smash at um, Bradford. Yep. Um, which, which, no, no, I'm sorry, no, that's a different accident. <laughs> my <laughs> smash at, um, uh, in the World Pairs. Yeah, land shift, and, yeah. Yeah, uh, big operation, out for a while. And then, um, to put it, Politely, things just didn't work well. Mm. You know, it uh, it altered my body. Um, I've still got numbness in some parts of my of my left leg. Um, and uh, how can I say? It? I, I wasn't firing on all cylinders, <laughs> so we were we were able to uh, to have another kid, and we just basically forgot about it until yeah. late later on. Uh, we had Jordy um, in '96, uh, and then Sky straight after that in '98. So and that was it then. I was <laughs> off for the job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, three's enough. And deal. Uh, handful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, obviously, you know, we look at your career tonight, and obviously, first question is like anyone is that um, how did you get started? I know you obviously had the like most of the boys at the time. You were on the grass track. You came through the grass track schoolboy scene. Um, but how did you sort of like yeah. get the get the bug into like first even get on the grass track bike? Okay, well, um, my two cousins rode. Uh, John Williams and Clayton Williams. Uh, they they rode first off. I went to see them uh, along with my parents, you know, going to support, support our cousins or my cousins. And uh, I just said to my dad, I, you know, I'm quite fancy. I'm going to go with that. Fortunately, my dad was very, very handy. Um, he he was he he was a, a mechanic for a car racing a saloon car racing mm. uh, Alan McKetney. Um so he 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 had quite a lot of uh, knowledge about engines um, and he'd done uh, I think it was like a you know metalwork courses at, in college and stuff so mm. he built me my my first bike well and a number of bikes after that uh, so yeah we went and I I started racing at the age of uh, six. Well, very, very young then, and uh, obviously yeah. getting, the, getting the bug for it, and then um, obviously then steadily progressing through the classes as you went along. Yeah, well, uh, the age of six, and I think it was, I think I won my first 
um, I was a British champion when I was like 10, I think. Mm. Uh, and then when I was about 14, I won another British championship. And I think either side of that, I, I was runner up second. So, yeah, th things went well, winning club championships. Um, so, and it was, it was just like, it was just so natural. It was um, like a guy goes out to play football, kicks the ball around. I just got on a bike and, and just did it. The way you went sort of thing. That's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, right? it, was, yeah. it was weird because a lot of people, um, they say, oh, you know, since uh, I was finishing now, why don't you do training schools, um, you know, to keep your eye on and stuff like that. And I'm like, I, I couldn't teach somebody because it just came naturally. Mm. I didn't have to work at, at riding a bike. I can't say, well, I did this and I did that, uh, which makes it better. It was just something I did. Yeah, everything it comes to you, it comes to you and that sort of thing. But I can imagine yeah, you, must have a, you must have a great, like a nice little rivalry with like Clayton Williams, because obviously that's a name I know um, from, the, yeah. from the early days of Grass when I used to go. But, um, you know, you must have a, like a nice little rivalry between you and him later on, as well as in the juniors. Well, that's right. I mean, like uh, we didn't actually race together in the juniors. So Clayton's like about, about three or four years older than me. Oh, OK. All right. Um, but yeah, when we went into the adults, he was like the the kid about town, mm -hmm. um, and you know he he was there. And suddenly I came on the scene and I started to beat him, and beat him regular. Mm -hmm. um, and it it caused caused a little bit of rivalry, a little bit of animosity <laughs> in the family. You know, nothing really bad, but you know, um, yeah, it, it was a little bit. It was a little bit colder the in between, you know, the temperature between us. But you know that that soon that soon passed by, mm. and he realised I was a lot better. Than it, so. <laughs> I was about to say, did it, did it sort of like reality hit home that uh, you're a bit better than he was? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean Clay, Clayton obviously was was a very good rider as well, mm. uh, winning the European Championship and uh, doing well on the continent as well. But uh, yeah, um, you you know people are always there to to take your place to um, to uh, just do that little bit better, and it fell my way. You know, it was it was it was a family member. Yeah, so. which, which is also sometimes a good thing rather than being against someone like you don't know sort of thing, and then that could have go the other way a little bit. You know, the rivalry could get out of hand a little bit. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, we 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 would uh, joke about it. Mm. later and stuff you know especially i mean now we still we still have a, have a laugh and a joke uh, about the race you know we should we should go and have a little meeting together and whatnot <laughs> and like, but it get real it's like you know it's, it's it's just not you know neither of us are, are up to it no it's, it's just like a little racer want we'll, want to get one over the other one again you know just for old time's sake isn't it? and things like that yeah yeah, yeah that's right that's right but uh, no, it's generally after a couple of drinks and, you know, you start talking about it and then you're ready to go and have a ride and it's not a good time to get on a bike. No, no we, we haven't got the old uh, clear vision, so, shall we say, you know, that's what it is. But yeah. um, obviously I was having quite a good success on the grass. You then took uh, to Speedway with your first club being Oxford. But I can imagine you did uh, like things like training schools, maybe down at like Weymouth or up in the Midlands at Cradley or places like that then. Um, actually, um, how did it start? Right, first off, it was I. I wasn't really interested in speedway. Mm -hmm. Okay. It, it, it didn't interest. I, I just I was happy. Kind of work. Play, um, I painting deco. I, I worked for my uncle to start with uh, mm -hmm. Clayton's dad, and I was just happy doing that. But but doing grass tracks, um, things were going well with the grass track. I just staying with, with, uh, on on the grass, and then. Um, I got I had it. I can't even remember how I got a bike or whether I borrowed John's, my cousin, because mm. he was riding for Exeter at the time. And uh, he used to pick me up some some Exeter were Monday night, I think. Uh, he used to pick me up like slightly early from school, high school. Mm -hmm. he used to go down with him to Exeter, like a, I was about two and a half hour John. <laughs> um, and he used to he used to ride. I sometimes I would mechanic for him, mm. and then I'd have a have a spin around afterwards. Um, this went on for a little bit, and then Peter Oakes actually approached me and wanted to wanted to sign me mm. um, down down you know down down the Exeter track, the county ground, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and uh, basically, we you know 
I was, I think I was, you know, I was like a 15 year old then. And um, it was, you know, the choices are made by your parents then. And my yeah. dad was like, you know, we'll, we'll see, see what the deal is. And it, it, my mum and dad were sorting out the, the, the finances of, of it all. And basically they didn't come up with uh, what, uh, what was wanted. Mm. And so uh, we just, just left it at that. I just carried carried on on the on the grass, and then uh, I was at a grass track, and I think it was half penny green. Okay. And there was um, a guy called Ken Williams. Mm -hmm. He he used to uh, he actually took he was part of the the consignment that took over with. Les Pottinger and Mike Gardner. It had something to do with organising it at Cradley in 94, I think mm. that was, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, so so he came uh, and approached me and he said, are you contracted to, to any Speedway side? Mm. And I'm like, uh, no, what, what, why is that? I said, okay, I've got someone who wants a word with you. So he then introduced me, who, who, who posed the question to him to ask me, because obviously you can't, if you're contracted, you can't speak to a rider. Another promoter can't speak to you about it. So it was uh, Bob Wosley, okay. um, uh, who was in, uh, who was part of Cradley, but with the Oxford side. Mm. So he said to me, "Do you fancy blah blah blah?" Same old story coming up. So in the end, um, I actually signed for Cradley. Um, they gave me a bike, albeit it was like a Mick Hanley. Do you remember Mick Hanley? He used to uh, yeah, bit, uh, yeah, yeah. He's from up, um, was up from from up uh, Cradley, Dudley. Mm. Uh, rode for Oxford. Rode the same team actually. Yeah. So we were down at the Oxford. I went to the Oxford Cheaters in '82. Um, had a had a had a few meetings there, and we actually. I, I can't remember exactly how many meetings I did, but it was about half a season. Mm. Pete Adams was 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 a promoter, uh, was team manager at um, Cradley at the time. So I was just out on a on a season's loan, mm. and they uh, we 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 had some sort of spat um, <laughs> in the pits, and it was I think it turned out it was like. Because, you know, I, I'm a kid, I've just come off the, you know, off the grass, I've got no experience on the speedway, <laughs> and I'm out there, and I'm just doing my stuff, and I'm hanging on, and winning some, and and not others, and, and the captain, I come in for a rest, I think we were probably actually pulling in the same place, we come in together, and he, he spat off, or whatever, mm. and, he, and he had to go, my dad, who was mechanic for me. Oh. But you don't have, you don't, you know, I don't care who it is. You don't have a girl in the family. No, exactly. And so that was it. I, I, I was off. Steel shoe was straight off. And I, because they were, they were like there and just, I just attacked him with it. Um, and, uh, you know, just like um, the red mist came. Mm. And that was it. Uh, so I just walked out of the meeting. Crapper says, you know, Brendan Crapper was the team manager along with, um, John Payne rings a bell, I think. But anyway, Crocker was the main man. But they, they, you know, it, it, it was their captain. They're going to side with him. Mm. I walked out and said, that's it, I'm, I'm off, you know. You'll never ride a bike, you know. You'll be this fine, that fine, or whatever. I went back home the next day. I phoned Pete Adams up, told him exactly what happened. He said, just leave it with me. He said, it's just all right. You know, it's no, no big deal. So, 82... Then I'm doing more. They, they used to have second halves at Cradley. Yeah. And uh, that was when, um, uh, obviously, yeah, uh, BP was there. Mm. Um, I said, uh, and I'm going out second halves. I've rode half a season on the bike and I'm riding with these bloody <laughs> world champions, you know, yeah. with, with Eric and Bruce and stuff. And I actually, I remember, and I don't know if it's true, but I just got it in my own head that I beat Bruce in one of these second half meetings, you know. Mm. I probably scared him half to death. <laughs> you know, it's just like, it's probably, you carry on, you carry yeah. on, you got it, yeah. Um, but it was, um, you, you, you just, you were, you were accepted, you know, mm. in, in, in society. And with those second halves, you were mixing it with the big guns. Yeah. 
uh, majority of the time you were finishing way behind, but you know you 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 had a chance. Mm. Um, and then um, yeah, 80, 80, 83, I got loaned out to Weymouth, mm. and that was brilliant. Total cat, different cut of fish. Mm. It was um, I don't know, it was Wiggy was at Weymouth. Yeah. Uh, so they took Wiggy to Cradley, and then I they loaned me out again to, as I say, to Weymouth. Mm. Um, Neil Street was manager, team manager down there then. Um, and what a great team with, with um, uh, was it Ye- Yatesy, Stan Bear, Scully, mm. um, Ian Gordon Humphreys, who else? Uh, I think actually, was, apparently, they, well, I can't remember it, but there was uh, Kim Major wrote two meetings or something. Oh, right. I or, that. Or, or I, you know, mm. I'm just like, I'm just what I've read through the archives. Yeah. You know? yeah. It's <laughs> yeah. not out here by any means, you know? No, I yeah. Just, I, I'm sort of like looking down here on little notes that I've, I've made, you know, <laughs> it, you know, it, it, waiting for this. Uh, this conversation we're going to have. Yeah. So yeah, I went down to there and um, my first full season. Mm. And Yates and I, we actually, well, we went to Bellevue, the old Bellevue, uh, and I, um, I won the with well, we won the uh, National League Best Pairs title, yeah. and that's my my first full season in Speedway. Mm. And I'm like, this is easy, this stuff, you know. <laughs> You know, what, what, what's it? Okay, you're not winning every race, but you know, it's inside you're getting results with not a great deal of, of effort put in, you know. And I think uh, as we finished like fourth in fourth in the league, and, and that was when there were like um 18 teams, yeah, in, in the national. I mean, like you know, it's no mean feat. So, yeah, it was um, it was a great uh, it was a great. Great season. I had down there with those boys. And Luke, I just remember Lou Coffin he used to be yeah, down there all the yeah. time as well. Now I knew Lou through the um uh through the grass track. Mm. And Lou was always, you know, he oh, he's one of my boys, you know, because he was grass <laughs> he one of my boys, one of my boys. And uh I always remember this one time, I said, No, I'm doing it's just like because Weymouth is very wavy down down the straights. Oh yeah, yeah. I said, I said it's like so he says, bend your arms a little, just simple things like that, you know, mm-hmm. bend your arms a little bit more and something other, and, you know, it makes a difference. Mm. So even though I say to you, uh, I didn't have to work and it came up, but little things, little tips like that, doesn't matter who it comes from, mm. you try it and it may work. And sometimes it pays off, sometimes not. So you, you're still, you're still learning. You, it's not like, oh, I know how to do it. You're learning all the time. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it's, hey, if someone else gives you an idea, just try it. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I know that feeling completely. But just like let's say, like little pointers go a long, long way. And of course, then with you sort of in the doubling up role with Cradley a little bit in the early part of your career, even though you're doing really well at National League, you still got the few outings with Cradley. You know, so so consequently, your your career was always progressing because you're always get someone bigger and faster than you, sort of thing. Yeah. I mean, I had um, eight meetings with Craigie that year mm. um, and uh, d- d- done well. Uh, so like you say, it's, it's, it, it was the start of the, of the I, I mean, everybody doubles up now, don't they? It's yeah, like, they do. <laughs> it is, I think it's for the lack of rides or tracks or one mm. or both. I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was definitely um, good for me. Also, it gave me more time on the track. Mm. Uh, with people the same um, the same level as me with the with the national league, then also also you can piece in about against better riders in the in the uh, in the British league. Mm. Yeah, which doesn't come more so than the likes of probably like Hans Nielsen, uh, and of course then you had like Lance King in your team. Um, so you had Simon there in '83. You know, yeah. um, Phil Collins, uh, Alan Graham, I think was there as well. Yeah, you know, big uh, big hours there, yeah, Eric. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, that, 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 that sort of nucleus of the, of the Crady team really stayed with you for nearly like your whole career, you know, because obviously, obviously after Eric's accident, then things changed. But what I'm saying is that most of the riders all stayed the same for like the last, well, like the next six, seven years, really. Yeah. Um, I mean, there were, there, were, there were a couple who came and went. Um, 
I mean, when, when I went in 84, uh, it was my first full season with the Heathens. Um, I mean, it practically said to, because that was it, because Colin took over from um, P. Adams. P. Adams, yeah. Uh, so, so Patty says to me, he says, right, he says, you're going to be in. He said, we just got one little problem. And it was like, the, you know, they, they brought in these um, uh, team averages. Mm. Uh, uh, I said, what's that? And he says, well, we're 0.01 over the limit. And, and no matter how hard you tried, the, the governing body said, no, that's the limit. No, you know, no preferences. He says, what you're going to have to do is uh, take the first month out. For some bizarre reason, Craigley still carried on winning meetings, but <laughs> having mysterious engine failures and touching tapes. And so, so basically, they lowered the average, mm. which allowed me in but it, it wasn't breaking the rules it was no. just working again you know working the best way to uh to get around them mm. so so that, that so that was it yeah it was, once i got in there then and then it was a uh, full season you know yeah exactly but then obviously you know what colin's like he'll always try and like work a magic here and there you know try and get the best team possible together you know and things like that yeah. so yeah. But, you know, like, oh, say, yeah, it's, like it's, you it's, say it was it was, it was uh it was pretty much the same nucleus of a team that had, uh pretty much you know we conquered everybody in 83 mm. you know everybody knows it was it's the best ever side there was yeah um i was fortunate to be a a, a bit part of that you know mm. um uh, 80, 84, yeah, we, we still still had a, a, a great sign. Mm. Uh, it had changed a little bit. Um, I think it was Lance that left, wasn't it? I think or, no, was no, he there in 84? Uh, Lance was there in 84. He left in 85. 85, um, right. Again, think... that was due to averages. Mm. Mm. You know, you, could, you had to get rid of somebody mm. and it just fell upon... It was Lance. Yeah, which is unfortunate because obviously you had the likes of a uh, young Yano coming through the through the team as well, yeah. as well as yeah. things like that. You know, you had say you had yeah. Phil still there. You had uh, Eric uh, Big Al was probably still there at the time. But obviously, the... what a team, you know, just know. Uh, just those guys. And it's like you know, you 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 um, you part of this team. You work together. You you live and breathe Cradley. You know, every Saturday night. Mm. Um, you know, we, we were there. It was, it was, it was going. It was you, when you went through the gates, you were going to your second home. Yeah, you know that's that's how you how you felt. It wasn't oh, at work again. You know, it was like yeah, we, we, we we're going home. Mm -hmm. And I I don't know who it was um, who 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 quoted in in the in the in the recent book um, that it was you know Cradley was a dump, mm. but as uh, so they said, it was it's our dump. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know we're, we're going to defend it mm. um, to well to the last race exactly exactly um, and I know in 84 Pratty put me he teamed me up with uh, Lance mm. and Lance was one and I was number two and uh, I mean I, we, we got on great you know, but Jesus Christ <laughs> he, he, had, he had a problem he had a problem turning his head Right, okay. Just say that. It was just like, and after a few minutes, I'm surprised. Wait, he's not even looking. You know, I said to him, and Lance is just, you know, and I said, he's not looking. And, and he says, well, he says, it's teaching you to look after yourself, isn't it? Yeah. Which, yeah. I guess, you know, he always, he always come out with some some quote, which mm. is uh, gen generally quite right, you know? Mm. Yeah, yeah, which is fair enough. And obviously, at the time, you know, it, it, whereas team riding is an it was uh, like pushed upon in that sort of time, you know. Obviously, yeah. nowadays you'd say, "Oh, well, that's just normal." You know, nobody looks for their teammate now. But back then, you still were team riding. So I think the likes of Eric was good at team riding and things like that. And uh, Eric was good, but the best, the best, the best pairing I ever saw was Big Al and Phil Collins. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree. Um, they, you know, being in the same team as them, obviously you see them every every week, week in, week out. They were brilliant. Um, to, and, and I was fortunate enough 
to later on uh, to be paired with Big L. Mm. And I was team riding with Big L. It, it was it was great. It was such a good team rider. Yeah. Um, yeah. He'd be he'd like like to to hug it around the line, and I like it out in the dirt, which mm. I think was similar to with uh, with Phil. Yeah. It was the same sort of setup, mm. and uh, one one of the best riders I've I've ridden with, now, and, to, and and then later late in later years, when uh, Peter Narling came to us for a season, yeah, uh, Peter and I teamed up, and that was a great partnership. We got mm. brilliant. Yeah. yeah, I remember that because he's an Eastbourne bloke, Peter Narling. He was, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, not nice little spot for me there. No, it's cool. But um, yeah, but it's, but it's like you know, you talk about Eastbourne, it's like hate it going down there. Well, it's a, it's a specialist track, shall we say? It, you know? always, I mean, I, I, what I do, I, I have two types of track. Mm. You have a race track and you have a Mickey Mouse track. <laughs> Something right, okay. like you gotta go up and bait <laughs> and almost turn back on yourself and then go up the other end. Yeah. Same again. But, you know, I it's not it's not racing. I don't enjoy those tracks. I like a big track, something you can get your teeth into, different lines, like uh, I mean with obviously Cradley, uh Bradford, uh Sheffield, mm. um places like that, and they generally had a lot of dirt. Even even uh, like King's Lynn, which is Quite, uh, yeah, it was quite a small track, but it was still a good race track. Yeah, good thing with Kings Lynn is it's uh, it doesn't look big, but it still rides like a big, big track, really. Um, yeah, it's quite wide, and and you can actually hit it round the line, or yeah. you know, up, up by the boards. Yeah. Exactly. I think I think um, the modern day Kings and shape is a bit different to what you rode. Um, I think okay. it's I think I think the track is a bit more narrower than it was, but the banking's got higher since since right. have it since you've been riding there. Because I think I've seen I've seen videos and things like that. And Kingsley back when you were riding was a lot wider, but it didn't have the banking like it has now. So that that's where yeah. I think it's now changed a little bit. But it's still a fun, fast racetrack. Um, with my experience of riding around there, I actually used to love the place. Uh, so. I, th- I think yeah, I think a few tracks have changed. Since I've since I've finished, because I, I finished in uh, ninety seven. Yeah. Um, and as far as I'm, I mean, I know Swindon Swindon had changed. Yeah. That was that was that was quite well publicised, um, which was a shame. I thought because I I thought the the first corner was the corner where you made all the passes. Because mm. the pit spend was always quite easy corner, you know, mm. which. I, um, what else you got? Wolverhampton's changed apparently yeah. as well. You know they've uh, have they widened it or something. Or? I think I think they've gone for sort of like the the egg shape sort of circuit now. You know and things like right. that. Whereas it, I think it might have been a bit more rounder the first second corner. But I know it's now sort of like it's like Eastbourne. It comes to a point in the middle of the corner. Um, so yeah, that, that and it obviously opens up the second bend a bit more and gives you a bit more of a racing line. Because I know obviously yeah. with um, Wolverhampton got the old Carlson corridor, you know, where Peter Carlson could nip back on the line and just get over yeah. the inside line. So yeah, yeah. but uh, no, yeah. It's, uh, that, that was another place I hated Wolves. You know, <laughs> again, similar little. Mickey Mouse place, you know. Yeah. But um, I, it, it, the the best part. I mean, it's such a great rivalry between yeah. us and Wolves. Yeah. You know, it was that. local. It was a local. It's like a Manchester derby in the uh, uh, in the football or United Liverpool. You know that sort of thing. Mm. Um, it was it was great, especially like you got the Dudley Wolves trophy. Yeah. That that was Dudley Wolves trophy was like it was fierce. I bet it was. Yeah. There, there were no prisoners, home yeah. or away. Yeah. Uh, I, I, and, and, and the crowd were just the crowd were riding the bike with you. Mm. I mean, they did every week. They were, they, they were, they were our eighth man, if you like. You know, yeah. The team. yeah. Um, but you know, they, they were like there. They're just so wound up for it, you know. <laughs> um, and it was so great. I mean, so I think we won more times than not. But I wouldn't. I'm not quite. You know, I don't know for sure. <laughs> Well, see, I, I'm I, sure I, somebody I, will correct us on that. If, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, see, I see. I, I don't know what the what the, uh, the the scores are. You know who who's won the most or not, but I've, I won't want to say nothing because I don't want to upset none of the fans. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, but, uh, yeah. but we'll say we'll say Cradley for now. But until I get Wolverhampton yeah. rider on, they say no, it was Wolverhampton. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure I'm sure it was Cradley, but it was great. There was, there was 
so it was like really, it was uh, so rivalry, but then it was like, you go in the, you know, go in the bar afterwards and have a pint together. Yeah. Yeah, you know that's great. that's that's the way that's the way Speedway was. I I I don't know if it is now. I I, I couldn't say because I'm not been. Mm. But um, yeah, that that's the way it was. You know, unless you had to dash off somewhere, you went in the bar. You had a chat with the with the supporters. You you generally had a chat with the you know with the, uh, your your opposite opposition. Mm. I mean, they, they they you're out there doing the same job. Mm. But it's just you a case know, of you're not being... out there to kill each other. But there was some some. Touch and go moments. <laughs> I bet there was, you know, because obviously yeah. no, none, none of the riders want to lose to the the uh, the rivalry, you know, things no. like that. But no. um, but like you said, but um, that, concentrate back, back onto Crowley and your time at Crowley was the fact that um, obviously you guys were like the KO Cup kings, really, in the in mm. the mid to late eighties. You know, yeah. I think it was like a case of you won it like three or four years on the trot. You four know, four years uh, on the trot, I think it was. That's yeah. it, yeah. And uh, I think our Big Al's got the trophy, hasn't he? Because I think he had, one of the years he was, he was um, diagnosed with his illness and uh, he came back at the last minute. Actually, yeah, the Big Al was, was, was quite, well, not quite, very ill mm. with uh, Hodgkinson's. Ah, that's it. I uh, and uh, yeah, he, it, it hit him for, for six, obviously, as it, as it would do anybody. Mm. Um, and, you know, we are all we're all really good friends you know um and it was hard to see somebody go through that mm. um yeah he, he had support but he, he obviously worked at it himself yeah uh did, did the best he could and like yeah he you know he come back sooner than anybody expected a lot of people didn't expect him to come back to racing you know mm. um and yeah um quite rightly so um, he's he's got the he's probably got it in his garage somewhere. <laughs> big 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 Al's garage is just like a bloody maze of engine bits and pieces, and there was there was nothing in place. It was just, but that was the way he worked. Mm. That yeah. was the way he worked. Yeah. But no, it's just obviously nice that uh, you guys gave him the trophy after they like said he came back earlier than what everyone expected, and then he was there for the cup. For, I think he like must have, I think I read somewhere or heard somewhere that yeah, he dropped a couple of points over the two legs of the final. I think it was against, yeah. Coven, against Coventry, maybe. I think you were against that. that I year. know. I think yeah, I think I think it was, but yeah. um, because that was I think at the time when Coventry done the double in the league, won the league league back to back. I think it was one of those years, and Craig maybe don't talk about those. No, we don't. But no, I'm, I'm, I'm just no. I'm setting the scene to people who didn't who don't know it, you know. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but um, obviously, yeah, like I said, like I said, the, the KO Cup Kings. But then on, on an individual front, you were improving year after year. I think in '85 you got your first sort of England call up um, in the Test series against Denmark. I remember uh, seeing the videos. I think you were reserved for, at the Crady fixture, and then you managed to get uh, one or two rides in that meeting. Right. Okay. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> yeah. I, I I I don't remember the initial start. I remember. I remember we, we used to have a lot of test matches, mm. um, and, uh, and and they and they were they were like um, world test matches rather than just just a, a, I don't know. Just a, it, it was the. You had the top guys from from each country. Yeah. You know, the, uh, and different years, England were better than the Swedes, and then the Swedes were better than the Danes, and the Danes took over from the Americans, and so so it wasn't just one team dominating. Maybe maybe for a, a couple of seasons, and then and then it would it would the tides would change. Yeah, but at the time you were unfortunate at the time with the old dominant Danes, you know, where they kicked in to just dominate international speedway for like uh, seven, eight uh, years. Yeah, it was like, okay, you got the Danes here, who's second? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, we, never, we never thought like that. We just all thought, yeah, no, we're going we're gonna to do it. We're going to, mm. you know, we're gonna, we, you get the tactics in your head and stuff. Uh, but they, they just, they were just so good. Yeah. You know, that was it. They were just so good. They, if if they, if it wasn't Hans and Eric like bloody launching out the start, mm. it was Yano buzzing around the white line. You know, just like <laughs> you know, and, and he's just like comes around. And Jan's, he, his head was always shaking. You know, yeah. And yeah. if you see his videos, he's always shaking his head like that. You know, yeah. Um, and yeah, they they were they were just uh, they were just a good side. I mean, obviously before them it was. The, the Americans, maybe. Yep. I was, you know, we, I mean, yeah, Cookie, Cigarless, uh, 
Bruce, Sean, I guess, Sean Moran and, and, and people like that. The Morans and stuff. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're, the, they're the squad to choose from. Mm, exactly. I mean, I don't know if anyone really studies it like I do, but, you know, you look back at your period in the 80s, you know, and the riders you rode against, like you say, you said uh, John Cook, you had Sam and Malenko breaking onto the scene, uh, Hans, Eric, you know, Bo Peterson, Tommy Knudsen, you know, Jimmy Purr, you know, the, the yeah. list is endless, you know. You think, yeah. Jesus Christ, this was actually a time on the international scene was that it was a hot place because there were so many top riders you know and uh, you could see him near enough every week in the British League exactly every week uh, home or away you would have two maybe three maybe more mm. top internationals in this in, in each side yeah um, and it, you know I, I know it's always uh, it's the same with the football oh, our era was better blah blah <laughs> yeah. blah, blah but I, I read you know not just me, I'm mean, like, no, many people, not just riders, mm. think the, the like back end of the 70s, 80s were the best era for, for Speedway. Yeah, you know, yeah that, I think it was a transition just, period. Mm, yeah. it, just, it just like, as you said, it was just so many names and, and, and guys, you know, the, who not heard of, you know, coming, jumping onto the scene and suddenly they're, you know, world finals and things um yeah it was it was a good time yeah i can imagine it was but it was just like every like i say every meeting was a big meeting no matter what no yeah. matter what the what the fixture was it could have been england denmark or it could have been could have been, yeah. cradled, could have been cradled like ipswich sort of thing you know you would have had you know top riders in both teams at that sort of time there, there were no easy points no you know nothing 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 was easy it was just like but you know i i, I guess uh I've I've seen a few a few meetings on um, YouTube um, of like nowadays, mm. and it just it just I mean you've got one one may one definitely one maybe two good riders in the side, mm. and 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 the I don't know maybe it's just me but it just looks like the rest of like what we used to call the crazy juniors. Mm. You know, um, it's, I'm not disrespecting the the riders, you know, or anything, but but the level is just so so low. Yeah, yeah. You know, it all it almost makes you think. Yeah, I'm just getting. If I could get in a pair of leathers, um, oh, actually, not leathers is Kevlar. Kevlar, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Um, it, I can go and do it. I, unless, yeah, I couldn't. There's no way you could. But right. it just makes you feel that way. Yeah. Mm. Um, and it's and it, and it's a shame, really. I think a lot of it comes down to the the, the grassroots, mm. where you've not got so much involvement with um, with um, with the English boys, especially. Mm. We came through from school. We're racing. You start at six, seven, eight years old, progress as you say through the sides into into your speedway. Mm. Um, the Swedes uh, and the Danes, more the Swedes, was it? I think. They had a lot of um, 50s, Speedway, that yeah. type of thing. Um, but it's it's just gone by the wayside now. It's got very expensive. Mm. You know, um, it's it's not, as I say, I was fortunate where my dad built and tuned uh, my bikes from the age of six right up. It was it was almost into, into the adult section. Mm. You know, he uh, and, and I rode his bikes in the adult section as well, but maybe some different modes or somebody done the motors, I can't remember. But yeah, I was fortunate that, you know, he was uh, able to do that. But yeah. the amount of money now, and, and I've seen the price or talked about the price with the, the merchandise now, mm. and it is just ridiculous. It is, yeah. You know, yes. there's not a great deal that has changed. Why is it four times the price? You know, yeah. it's like I would, I would, I would go to um, like in the eighties. I go to Eddie, Eddie yep. Ball. Uh, he he do actually he did, he did most of Cradley Riders. He did, yeah. Motors, you know? <laughs> he, steady Eddie, um, and you pay. I think you know it would be about twelve twelve hundred 
uh, pounds, fourteen hundred pounds for a brand new tuned engine. Mm. I think you're looking like seven grand or something now. Yeah, it, it is silly money now for what for um, for engines and things like that. But uh, the problem also is is it's getting your hands on them. You know, it's like uh, if, especially if you get them from abroad, you ship them out from abroad, and then you get them in the UK. It's that price as well you pay in between and stuff like that so that hikes yeah, the price i mean that's not going to make a bloody that much of a, no it doesn't make, it doesn't make that much difference, difference is it? But, no I, I i i saw uh oh, how many years ago was it now probably about five six seven eight years ago uh they had a danish um team come down to practice at marmond on the speedway and Brian Cargo was down there because he was doing Nicky's engines at the yes, time, Nicky yes. Pedersen. And uh, so I saw Brian and you know, we were having a chat and stuff. And so I said to him, well, so what's, what's really changed, you know, to, to, and this was a number of years ago, to, to, to make the engines more expensive. And then he says, not a lot, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. said, yeah, but what, what are they paying the price for? He said, like, he said, well, the thing is, one person is charging that, so the other two you know, is going to charge that, and it just snowballs. Yeah, you, yeah. I mean, uh, as well, a lot, a lot of riders are like sheep. Mm. You find somebody who's doing really well on, a, on an engine that's tuned by so and so, Joe Bloggs down the road, mm. and, and, and they have to have that engine. Mm. You know, it's uh, it, no, it doesn't mean it's the end, it means the rider has to contribute. The engine yeah. has to be good, don't get me wrong. But a rider has to contribute to it. You know, he's just a better rider than you. Mm. Or, you know, you know, maybe you just need to change a couple of little things. But, um, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it, it, it's kind of frustrating as well with guys like um, they, they're coming for a bad race and, think, you know, it's like they, they got beat. And oh, what was wrong there? What was, what's up? Uh, couldn't find the setup. Mm. What the bloody hell are you talking about? <laughs> oh, what a load. That, that is just the phrase of speedway isn't it now yeah i got the wrong set i guess it, it's just like you know no no you just you just didn't ride well yeah you didn't you didn't make the start you didn't do this you didn't do that you know uh, you know you can't not find the right setup after two rides it's impossible no so you go from that to that and you know um but you know there, there's a lot more excuses flying around now and there's, there's a lot more it's so um, uh, it's a bit like football. Mm. You can't tackle now. No. You know, um, a rider can't go in hard and move the other guy out. Uh, I don't mean by putting him through the you know fence off for yep. a hot dog or whatever, but you, you can't do they get excluded for it. You can't move on the start. Mm. <laughs> um what's that all about i don't yeah. i don't mean rolling as it used to be into yeah, the yeah. tanks back and forth but the guy made a fly the guy didn't touch the tapes he anticipated it fair play to him he could have so easily hit the tapes and got excluded yeah i think a lot of that sort of thing is because uh likes in poland all of a sudden became really really hot on it and then it snowballed into the grand prix and then i think again that's from snowballed from in, into england so like the referees yeah. are like a lot more sharper but i think like you say i mean as a as ex rider and also spectator who enjoys watching the sport it does kill a meeting when you have 15 races or whatever and then you had 10 reruns because somebody yeah. somebody yeah. blinked early basically i mean yeah. the, the classic one i always remember is once the british grand prix one year i think it's the year magic yunoski won i think it was the semi-final and he twitched like you know like a fraction didn't make an advantage, just made a blinder of a start, and then the referee yeah. called it back, thinking he rolled. He looked at the replay and actually phoned up Magic in the pits and apologised to him because he was in the wrong. Uh, yeah. he, but it's it's got silly nowadays, you know. Like I yeah. said, I understand if someone would roll too far that he he had touched the tapes, but yeah. got, I think you've got to let it go because it, it's part of the excitement, you know. Exactly, things like, yeah. Things like that. Yeah. I mean, and you know, the guys, the guys are on 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 the edge, you know, their nerves and. Uh, and and you know you see, you you're just focused on that magnet, mm, exactly. waiting for it to go, and you and you it's um you know it's 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 almost as bad as VAR. 
<laughs> I, don't, I don't watch football much. I don't know. I don't I don't know. know. <laughs> no, no, oh, right. no, no, I stay away from that as much as possible. But uh, yeah, it, it is kind of that sort of situation, you know, he's, uh, you know, especially when referees can watch back on television, you know, and things like that. And you can spend five yeah. minutes waiting for a referee to make a decision, you know, which yeah. again drags the meeting out and all that sort of thing, you know. Yeah. But, you know, it, it is what it is in modern speedway. You it know? is, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Um, but looking at, you, obviously back to your time in speedway and things like that obviously the riders the racing i always think looking back and i had this conversation with mark in the previous show saying that that sort of time into the 90s and stuff like that you know it was better racing the racing was good because you could knock lumps out of each other so to speak and you would get away with it you know yeah. because uh, i think um that's the difference between an upright and a lay down especially the lay downs nowadays um because i think the lay downs nowadays are too twitchy you know, and things like that, you know. Yeah, I don't know, not, not, not riding well. I mean, I, I did ride the lay downs, but yeah. um, uh, I don't know with the, the engines now. You know, if they're too twitchy, well, so, soften them up. Yeah. Make them so, you know, make them so they work for you. And that, that's you what um, Mersol did, you know, with the GCR, bringing that in. Because um, the idea being with that is that the power band's a bit more wider. So you can yeah. uh, you can you can play with it more, you know, basically, yeah. and have the same sort of power and the top end speed that you need on the big tracks. Yeah, I mean, we we are, going back to uh, say uh, the the weekend we had with um, with Eric and Marcel. Um, we, we were talking say about, about his engines and stuff. Well, anybody's engines really, mm. and what was right, what was wrong, um, and the guy is so knowledgeable. Oh yeah, I can imagine he is. He's he is just it was just he's just like a like a like a encyclopedia of, <laughs> of an engine, you know. Yeah. He can tell you what weights this is, what ratio, blah 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 blah. I mean that just mm. Mm. It, it was it, it was so good to listen to him, you know. Yeah. Uh, and and he wants so much, the same as Eric, for the sport to 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 advance, not to cost an arm and a leg, to be affordable to riders. To, to to help them make a living. Not yeah. that they just have to, everybody has to race in Poland and, you know, that's it. They've, they've, they've got the monopoly on it now. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, what happens when, when that goes tits up? I expect it will at some point, you know, once all the mafia disappeared, <laughs> you know, with all the money and stuff, you know, it's just like, it, 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 everything goes round in circles. Yeah. You know, where, does, where, where's does. everybody going to go there? And, uh, you know, they're going to be looking to the other leagues and, and they'd have fallen by the wayside. I'm surprised mm. the British League is still is still like a two-league thing. I, 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 why they can't amalgamate the, the mm. two, I just, there's obviously reasons into it. Yeah. Yeah. But just looking as, a, as a, like an outsider, it's like, would be so much better they've had ample uh, riders for for each side mm. um and and you get you get to travel through the whole of the country from north to south yeah um and uh, and everybody we have all supporters will get to see all of uh, what everybody riding in the uk yeah, yeah, I, I totally agree with that because obviously that happened in your career as well back in 95 and 96 was obviously the amalgamation of the two leagues um, to have one big league, which was the Premier League at the time um, and things like that. So, did it? Yeah, it did. Yes, trust me. I, I know these things. You know. Okay. I, I, should, I say I should know that because we won the league in East won the league in 95 when it was the first year it happened. So, you know, that's how I remember it. But uh, uh, it's obviously a fix then. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> but um, going back. Hang on, so, let me have a little. When was that? Ninety-five. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here we go. He's got his notes out here. Yeah. Oh, but, we won uh, the we won the Dudley Wolves in ninety-five. Oh, that's all right then. Yeah, you yeah, won something. Yeah. 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 But um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a pretty dire season for us. I've just wrote down. It's like, yeah, it's much one one of those uh, one of those seasons. Yeah, it was. But. Yeah. Um, Obviously, looking back at to back to your career, you managed to make um, obviously like you managed to win the European Grass Track Championship in eighty six. So eighty six, yeah, that must have been a good uh, British feeling. For Masters, British Masters champion the same year. Yeah, um, I won that twice. Yeah, um, and uh, yeah, then the following year, I think it was the following year, um, I did the. I did the 250 and a 350 yep. um, yeah. British Championship. Mm. Uh, I won the 350, Bill Davis from, you know, from Westlake. Yep. 
he he said to me, uh, "Can you ride a bike for me?" Because oh, I wasn't riding a three hundred and fifty or two. Uh, oh, I think I'd done a couple of two hundred and fifty ones. I had a two hundred and fifty anyway. Um, and uh, he said, "Can you ride? Can you ride this bike for me?" I'm like, "What? When?" He said, "Like in the British final." And I'm like, "Yeah, I got nothing on. I'll, I'll, I'll do that." So I think I rode the qualifier uh, for it, and um, yeah, everything went fine, and did the 350 British Championship and won it. Mm. And um, on the same day, I rode my 250, um, and Mark Wadsworth was the, he was like six times British champion, I think, <laughs> or maybe eight times, you know, he was, yeah. he was the kiddie on the 250. And I lost out by half a wheel oh. to, to Wadi on the 250. So otherwise, I'd have, I'd have managed to win all of all the classes, you know. Yeah. Not the same year, but uh, yeah. So um, yeah, that was that was that was a good experience. So that was a 350 Westlake. All oh, right, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool because obviously, like you said, that you hadn't done it before really. So then you thought, oh, it's an unknown. Of course, a nice easy meeting like the British Championship. You know, you know what could go wrong? <laughs> yeah, it, it was it was his bike. It was their bike. You know, they just mm. turned up with a bike and I rode it. Yeah, and the way you went, yeah, and you so managed that, to say, that, that. managed to win it. So, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But that was good. Also, in that year, that was also a good year. Is it? That's eighty-seven, um, and things like that. You know, because I think you won the Western Australian Championship as well um, uh, in eighty-seven. Uh, I found I found online. So yes. I don't know if it's true yes. or not. So, <laughs> yeah, no, no, yeah, I've, I've got that written down here. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah went, went to went there to. Um, for three months, I think, down to mm. Perth, and uh, yeah, ma- managed managed to uh, to win that, which was, which was great. Yeah, it was it was good. I mean, you ride around those those uh, they're big tracks. Yeah, and uh, which suited me down to the ground. Um, but you had to put on these big car mufflers on the I've seen uh, silencers. Yeah. Have you seen? Yeah. Them? I've seen them. And, yeah. and it's just like it's just like so weird the first time you run it. Is this thing going? You can't <laughs> hear it, you know. Yeah. Um, but that, yeah, they, um, managed managed to to win that. Then I thought, yeah, go down there, get some um, some laps in, fresh for the season, you know. When he come back, I come back, and I don't think I could do my trousers up and <laughs> been party partying too much, and you know, uh, I, I had to go on a big uh, a big a big keep fit. Uh, campaign and like to get ready for the uh for the season yeah yeah get back into fitness raging en- enjoy and enjoy myself too much yeah 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 i say <laughs> probably you go abroad you enjoy yourself too much you do it at home sort of thing you know yeah thing. i mean we 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 were on we we're on the on the beach every day mm. we rode once a week i think it was um and uh drinking too much and <laughs> <laughs> nightclubs and i mean you, you yeah we were kids yeah yeah you're young yeah. you're enjoying yourself you know that's, that's yeah. the main thing I, I was out, actually i was out there with my cousin clayton was out there oh, right, okay. he was working he, he worked actually he worked um for john tipman oh okay yeah. john tipman has got a bike shop he had i don't know if he still has uh had a bike shop there so clayton, clayton worked for him at the time and then it was myself and um kevin price mm. Um, who rode for Exeter? Yep, if you yeah, remember Kevin? Yeah, um, I mean, Kevin and I, we've been mates since like seven years old, eight years old mm. through the, the schoolboy grass track. I, some holidays, I used to go and stay down at his place, vice versa. Um, and then, well, it just went tits up for him and sadly, sadly missed. Yeah, yeah, he is. But uh, I mean, you know, obviously that, that year, 87 was a year that you really sort of progressed internationally as well. Um, obviously, like I said, you managed to qualify for your first world final, which happened to be the uh, Amsterdam world final, the two day final. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I never rode in a one-day final. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you, you turned up to one, didn't you, in eight, the following year? You were reserve, weren't you, for the uh, ATAs? Was that, was that Voyans? That was Voyans, yes. That, Voyans. That was, yeah, so you, you, did, you, took, you took part on it on parade. That was about as far yeah. as you got. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, that, that was it. It was, it was it, uh, Voyans, um, yeah, I got, got the first reserve. But, yeah. You know, it was like, um, it was, it, it's, you know, it was progress. Mm, yeah, yeah, that's that's how it is. Yeah, I mean, obviously with the Amsterdam, um, 
it came and went. Yeah. I was, you know, um, uh, I was just starting to get my mindset right where I could, I could, I could make something of the speedway, you know? Mm, yeah. Instead of just going out there racing, having fun. Mm. Um, and like, you know, if, if I've lost a race, I lost a race. Win or win, you know, it's just yeah. like, that's it. Um, but it started, you know, start, started to get more serious then. Mm. Um, and yeah, I was, it was my first world final. It was a little bit of an eye opener. Um, and yeah, you know, number one. Yeah, number yeah, one. You know, I've got the race jacket up there. Yeah. Um, number one, I think I had hands in the first race as well. Well, I can refresh your memory in a minute, mate, because I've got a clip of your, of the first race, of your first race from that one. Okay. Um, it should just come up in a minute if I just minimise that one. There we go. So off gate one or two or something like that. You were off gate number one in, in, in the red helmet colour. Um. And obviously, if nobody's seen this final, it's a big old track, very, very flat it was. Um, uh, inside, a, was it a cycle uh, track or an uh, dome track or whatever it was? Oh, gosh, it, looks, it looks as slick as... Um, as anything. As they, <laughs> yeah. They can do. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, because I think in your first race, you, you were off gate one. You had hands off gate two. Uh, Gerd Riss off three and Jimmy Nelson off gate four. So, you know, you, you would have thought, I imagine, that you got kind of gate one, make maximum advantage take maximum advantage of it really yeah i mean uh you know i'm just uh what was that 80 87, 87 yeah yeah but uh what, so it was so, like to 20, 22 yeah yeah so still yeah. still still very young in the big in the big time sort of thing really yeah yeah very um well yeah in, in, inexperienced at, at that level you know at, mm. um at that time yeah, so there you are, kind of gate number one, um, and everything. But was you was you nervous for this for your first race, or was you just no? Going I, to... I, I can I can honestly say uh, I have never been nervous at any point. Oh, okay, fair enough. Never ne nerves. No, I, I think it's from because I I rode since it was like getting out of bed. Mm, you know, yeah. rode since the age of six. It was it was what you do. Mm. Yeah, you 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 thought a lot more, but yeah, I was never, never nervous. Mm, yeah, I probably missed the start by a mile. Yeah, a little yeah. bit behind hands, mind you, against right. hands. That's, so. that's not too bad. Yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, so this is uh, obviously the first day because the, the race got stopped the first time round. But you're there, I did you, it. Yeah, you're, you're there diving underneath because uh, yeah, because there goes Eric. Um, sorry, it goes Gerd Riss oh, over Gerd the high Riss, side yeah. over the high side behind Jimmy Nielsen. Um, but yeah, I mean, you, you, in the first stage, you look quick and everything, and say just a bit slow off the start line. But then again, that could have been a case that the track was like, like I said, rock hard, slick. No, I was, I was just there. a shit gator, mate. I was just, <laughs> I was just so, so bad at the start. I don't know why it was, you know. I know I, uh, uh, Eric's, uh, Eric also said, anybody can gate, you just have to work at it. It's like, Jesus, nothing worked with me. Mm. I, I don't say I never made a start because I made some quite a few good ones, mm. but not consistent enough. Yeah, I think that's a lot of the problem with like a lot of riders is it was never consistent enough. You know, and if there's uh, if there's no dirt on the track, you mm. stuffed. Yeah, exactly. But obviously, this is the rerun um, of, of the race, and again, off gate one. You know, made a better start this time. Managed to get the better of hands, but obviously Jimmy Nielsen come from gate four. You know, yeah, just swooped around both of you and, and away he went, sort of thing. You know, so I expect hands comes by here as well. No, you no, you beat hands. Oh, did I? You, okay. Yeah, you actually beat hands. You know, because uh, yeah, it, it was one of the few points that he dropped on the night. Oh, there you go. I was almost world champion. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> you sort of what could have been, you know. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but no, I mean. Um, Obviously, it's obviously a great experience for yourself to be in that sort of environment, you know. Yeah. I mean, unfortunately, you only scored 10 points and over the two days and you came 10th overall. But yeah. um, obviously, this was the, the first day is during the night, you know, I things think, like that. I think, yeah, I think the first, obviously, it got more, it had more dirt on the track the first mm. day. And the second day, it was just like uh, an ice rink. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it was yeah i mean i've got i've got off this i could show you um the one of the races you had from day two 
Um, again, I think it was against Hans Nilsson as well in that one. But obviously to pick up two points in your first race in the world final must have felt good to be on the score chart straight away. Yeah, possibly did. Um, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm sure. I'm sure we had uh, my because we uh, and Andrea was at and, and we took Dan. Dan mm. was in the push chat. He was like <laughs> eldest, and um, I'm sure we had a nice walk around Amsterdam. Yeah, I bet you did. I bet you did. Yeah, I mean, I mean that, I... that was it. It was just like it's it's a family thing, you know. Yeah, family it's a weekend day. away sort of thing, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I've got to say, I can show you um, day two of the of the of the final. Um, here you are again. You've got uh, again a nice easy one. You've got hands on gate one. You're off gate number two. Um, Tony Casper and Eric. Eric four. Eric four. But you can see for look, those who seen him the start there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's nothing. Yeah, if, if, if those of you who are watching on the YouTube version of this, you know, is you could tell by how different it was from day to from one day to the yeah. other. But um, you know, it is it is chalk and cheese, you know. It would have been bad if we could use that banking on the outside there. <laughs> yeah. That, that would have made it interesting. Yeah, that that might that would have made it. See, see, look at hands moving. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, but mind you, I think hands and Eric were trying to get psych each other out, but then yeah, you know, you got in the middle of it all. You know, which is a good thing. You know, you split them up a little so, bit. So, so, sorry, Eric. <laughs> sorry, mate. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, know? team, mate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. But you can see that the, the track is obviously dire. Yeah. You know, it, yeah. it was. It wasn't. Con- I think the track must have been too big for what it was, and you know, with it being so slick, you know. I think it was. Those. Yeah, I think the track was probably okay. You know, mm. um, but there's just not enough dirt on it. Yeah, yeah. But of course, obviously, if you have a day meeting, like anyone knows, it's going to be yeah. worse than what it would be under the floodlights, you know, because obviously the moisture doesn't stay on the track or anything like that. But you can, yeah. I mean, you just, if you can see hands just pulling well, away. Well, they, they, they didn't look like too many lines there, did they? No, I mean, looking at it and seeing later on in the footage of anything, anyone's seen it, they don't move off the line that much. You know, this is the first day you would be able to, you're able to pass because I think uh, Sam and Malenko did several passes on the outside, but then he was okay. up, up against the up against the fence, literally. Yeah. He, he was up against the fence trying to find dirt. But right. um, but yeah, I mean, unfortunately, on day two, you only scored three points. Um, yeah. this, this was your best ride. It was obviously in your first one when you came second. But mm. I think, like you said, I think it's the track conditions that uh, caught yourself out more than anything, you know. Um, but you know, again, what could have been would have been sort of thing. But no, it's but, you know, it, it, it happens. You know, that's the way it goes. Yeah, exactly. But then obviously, yeah, but obviously, like I said, take that experience forward. You know, in your in your, in your young career and all that sort of thing at that sort mm-hmm. of stage. Yeah. Obviously, then on to like 1988 was obviously um, a much better year for yourself. Again, I think on the international front, we managed to win the overseas final. I think it was that year. Um, was it yeah, that was final? that was a runoff that uh, that was a commentary, wasn't mm. it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, uh, run off with Calvin and uh, Wiggy. Another easy race, you know, certain three points. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, that's what, it, what is the point of, of being a world champion or um, one of the best in in if you've not got the the the, the class to race against? You know, yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. You know, you can you can be a big fish in a little pond. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, you can. Um, like- and obviously, that, that if you if in that sort of situation, that's where it's going to sort of like your career is going to stagnate, isn't it? Really, yeah. You know, you're not going to move forward. Um, no. But obviously, like you said, that was obviously a big highlight in your own career. Even looking back now, you know, you yeah. managed to to win that. And I mean, again, that's that's no mean feat against Kelvin and Simon, top end of their yeah. career as well at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we we're, we're all you know we we're, we're all fighting, not not li- not actually but like you know to be england number one if you like yeah um or the you know it's just hypothetically speaking it's not uh something you went oh i want to be number one it's just like you want to be the the best you can you can be um and then i i see down here (laughs) on my little notes um (laughs) that cal Cal, that was the will pairs Bradford, 88. Yeah, it was well pairs, which uh, I'll come on to that in just in just a minute. But obviously, you managed okay. to make it, make it make it through to the Intercontinental Final, which unfortunately that's where um, you didn't score enough. I think you only scored like five points, something like that. And you just missed out on that last spot for the final, yeah. which was obviously, like you said, it was in Voyans um, and, and things like that. But yeah, obviously, like you said, um, the World Pairs final, 
Bradford. Um, you know, and again, I've got a bit of footage from that just to jog your memory a little bit. You know, if you yeah. wanted to, to to watch that, and obviously that again, this was when you had uh, the uh, the uh, the six man races. Yeah, know? yeah, not so. something I'm favourable of. No, but, but, but fortunately, somewhere like um, like Bradford, Brad, um, Bradford, you you were able to do it because look look at the width of the track. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, you had you had space. Yeah, this is really. I mean, get... we we always like when Calvin and I. I mean, we we didn't really see eye to eye, Calvin and I. I think it was mm. more the fact that we were just opposing Brits. Yeah, you know, for for different sides. But whenever we rode together, be it a uh, a pairs. World Team Cup, um, uh, racing for England. We 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 were team. We were yeah, team. Exactly. But uh, this one, you're against. I think the, the was it the Poles and the Hungarians, and uh, there's you in second place there. And uh, yeah, I mean, like you say, Bradford is a great home track to have, but you don't have much advantage because most of the blokes were riding in the British League and had ridden there. You know, so yeah. you didn't really have much of a home track advantage. But no, I mean, only... we we also we we always. Um, Calvin and I, when we had, because you got choice of the gates, mm. Calvin would always take the better gate. Yeah. And then I would take, because Calvin, it, we were gambling on points, if you like. Yeah. Calvin was there to, to he was the best, the better gator out of us. Mm. Uh, he was a good gator anyway, Calvin. Um, and he, he would go to, to bank the points. Mm. I would be the one who would, who would be, may, maybe make a good gate. Yeah. I'm joining that, or I could, I would be the the guy who come from behind. Yeah. Uh, so that that's how we always worked on the uh, whenever we were racing together. Yeah, yeah. I mean, unfortunately, this race got curtailed, I think, because some of the one of the riders crashed. But you were we were win the race quite comfortably. Yeah. Um, in that one, but uh, yeah, like I said, you know, unfortunately, the FIM, you know, after a while, then got rid of this six man idea, you know, and things like that. But um, yeah, I mean, it's obviously a spectacle to watch as a fan, but obviously as a rider, it wasn't anything practical, really. No. I think, I think it's so, it was a, it was, there's so few tracks that could actually have six riders on the track, really. You could, you could. I mean, if you take out the first lap, if you like, yeah, it's fine because riders just spread out. But if you you got six guys going for the same piece of dirt, first turn, and then generally still quite close together going into the third, mm. um, something you know something's going to give yeah exactly exactly um and obviously this, this is this is the rerun of it because i think uh like in fim meetings back then obviously you could you had to you couldn't award races if it got stopped you had to rerun it no matter what lap you're on sort of thing obviously that's changed in recent times but um, okay but um again it's you and let's say you're off gate number one again and this one because obviously like you said you swapped gates over because obviously tatum was on gate four whatever it would have been gate five maybe um, in this one, but yeah, look at I mean, there you go. You two making two cracker starts, and away you go, yeah. sort of thing. Yeah, um, I, I know it sounds a bit blase, but um, it, oh, it was only a few years ago. <laughs> I I forgot I was even in the World Pairs final in '88. Oh, really? I didn't. I didn't. I, I can't remember that. Yeah. Someone said to me about it. I'm like, really? <laughs> and I had to watch it to like jog jog my memory. Mm. But I, a lot a lot has gone out of it. I've had too many bangs on the head, and <laughs> it's uh, I've 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 forgot a lot. So, sometimes it comes in handy. You know, yeah. If, if Andrea asked me to peg the washing out or something, if she comes back, you know, oh sorry, babe, I just forgot. You know. Yeah, yeah it falls yeah. out more than anything else nowadays. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just, you know. But um, <laughs> obviously, um, in. Um, that year also in 88, I think also you, you made the World Team Cup final because I think that was in um, Long Beach, it was in 88, I think if I remember rightly, um, where I think it was uh, it was against like the, the US over there, Denmark, Sweden, and you said, Yeah, yeah, that was, yeah, that was, that was that 88. Was yeah, it was 88 because yeah. that was the second time they went there for the World Team Cup mm. um, and things like that. So, yeah, I mean, that must have been a good experience to go to America and just go right out there. Yeah, it was, uh, I mean, I. I've, I've been to the States quite a few times. I, I liked it out there. Mm. Fortunately, you know, I've got, got um, teammates who live out there, so we used to just, just crash at their place or go to their place on the way to Australia or on the way back. Um, and, yeah, I think, well, we went out there. I, I may have even stayed out there for 
can't know, I can't remember, but uh, yeah, I, li- I liked uh, I liked it out in out in the states. Yeah, because I think that's also the time when you had like a, a certain young Gary Havelock was in the team, Kelvin was there, uh, Chris Moore and Simon was all there. Yeah. So you still yeah. had a, a really strong side, but I think uh, a case of the, again the Danes and the Americans were just that little bit stronger. I overall. think d- the Danes won it, didn't they? Yeah, they did. Yeah. Um, and then the Americans um, finished. Second. Yeah, but unfortunately, uh, the Brit we, we came we came last. We we, we run- were we were shit. Yeah, because yeah. because I think it was Kelvin had a run off with Per for the third place. But the only yeah. for, only fortunate thing is I don't think England had to go for the qualifiers because the following year was at Bradford, so well, it, wasn't, yeah, it, it, there we was, go. it wasn't too bad. Yeah, you know, that, yeah, that sort yeah. of thing. No, it was it was a dismal performance. But um, you know, it happens. We didn't get the right setup, did we? No, That's exactly. It's, it's, it's yeah. a really set up again, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but um, before we just move on to that sort of 89 to 90 seasons, um, I found um, also a bit of footage of uh, yourself when you had, I think, uh, a bit of time riding in Paris. There was a meeting in Paris. In, oh, uh, shit. That you know. was a motocross. Yeah. And I was going to ask you about that because I, I, I've seen the, the, the meeting, but this is your opening race. Um, uh, I think you had, uh, I think it's Randy Green was in this one. You had Andrew Silver um, and and yeah. yourself um, and things like that. And, you, and, and just looking at the track and everything in this footage here, it, it doesn't look like it's all straw bales around the outside. You yeah, know? but I think it, it was it was just a terrible track. It, it's just holes and bumps and jumps and I, I mean. It, it was sort of like a bit of bit of a grass track, really. Yeah. But um, yeah, it was, it, it was horrible. I, I only did the first day. Yeah. Um, because I was I was riding for Crayley on the um, the the, follow, the following the second day. So I, the first day I did, and then the second I flew, I flew back uh, from Paris on the on the following morning. Yeah. Yeah, so because I think I've seen footage of Hans Nilsson doing doing this meeting and you know yeah, hands, hands, look, ha- hands looking like hands, you know, you know, looking at, making it look smooth anyway, no matter how rough the track yeah. was, sort of thing. Yeah. But in this bit here, you see Andrew Silver trying to get round. As I say, I think it's Randy Green um, and things like that. But then, I mean, something- and Andrew Andrew's like you know, such balance on a bike, you know. Yeah. You know, and he just looks totally. I like to say out of control, hanging on. Yeah, and th- there was you way out in front, and where you went, sort of thing. But um, yeah, yeah, but yeah, uh, but yeah. So I, th- I found that. I thought, oh, we're, we're asking about that one, you know. That, yeah, it was, it was just it was, it was an exhibition. Mm. Um, to be honest, I don't know how it came about. But yeah, it was um, it was it, it was a shame because um, if they, if they had a better surface, they had, they had some decent riders there. Yeah, and um, we could have put yeah. on a good show. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it might have done something good for French Speedway at that sort of time, yeah, being, being yeah. in Paris and that sort of thing. But then obviously moving on to 1989, um, again, that was probably, I think it was a good year for, for Cradley, a good solid year again for Cradley. But um, obviously that's when a certain young Greg Hancock was trying to come onto the scene um, and, and things like that. And again, I think it was a case of the averages didn't fit for the first month or two. And uh, and then all of a sudden he came in during the season. Like, <laughs> it's, it's weird how that happens, isn't it? It is. It's very weird. Yeah. But uh, what what sort of like your, your sort of like memories then of Greg when he first sort of came over them? Anything? Good? Um, you know, he he hears what you see. Yeah. You know, that's that, that that's Greg on and off the track. That's that's how he is. You know, um, obviously, you know now he 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 works very hard to. To um, to pass on his experience to to other riders. Yeah, he does. Um, and you know he, he he's he, he's he's a good marketing tool. Mm. Um, and uh, you know he's he's you know he's what do you want? He's won. Is it three or four times world champion? Four, four times. Four times. So. Four, four times world champion, you know. Um, you know, it's uh, he's you know he's a, he's a class act. Yeah, very much so. You know, he's 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 one one of the one of the best, um, and um, you know he's uh, he's he's worked hard at it, and he's uh, he's reached his uh, rewards. Oh yeah, hundred percent. You know, he's, he, he's he, you know he's I think it was um, because when he came over, 
he he lodged with Eric, mm -hmm. which was wasn't too bad, was it really? You know, you come and settle in and stuff, and <laughs> hanging out with the you know the world champions, buddy Garage and stuff. <laughs> uh, and uh, I think he had Michael, I think is Eric's mechanic's name at the time there, showing him different bits and pieces. And then then he went, he lost with Lance after that. He was he was like it was like went from house to house. Yeah, yeah. So that's the only way you could yeah, learn at that time. Yeah. yeah. And then in, in 91, he came to live with Andrea and I. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, uh, it sort of fell about where, um, sort of jumping ahead a bit mm. with the, uh, when I, I broke my back and was, was, was out. So my workshops there. Yeah. Um, so, you know, he's, he's set his teammate. Mm. Um, so yeah, he he came and, and lodged with us. So like I so, said, yeah, he did. He went all downhill from there. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but like you said, he obviously went from house to house to house, and then he finally managed to get some money together, get his own place. You know, yeah, and then, yeah, and yeah, like yeah. yeah. I think he's got two now. Actually, I'm not sure. Anyway, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's Greg. Um, but yeah. obviously, then obviously. But, so going back to your career in '89 and things like that, obviously um, the World Team Cup final winning when Great Britain yeah. or England won it was fantastic. But obviously, the, obviously the day is obviously marred by the by Eric's crash, which was unfortunate. Very, very much so, you know. Unfortunately, you were you're in it. In that first race, mm. all four of us carted off. Um, yeah, it was you know uh, what can you say? Everybody knows about that and what's what's happened since. Mm. Um, unfortunately, the, you know, it's, it's part and parcel of the sport as we yeah. get injured, yeah. same as any motorcycle sport, mm. you know, you, you have a crash, you've left the bike, um, then you can, you know, you can, you can have a total arse back face all over the place and get up and brush yourself off mm. or just have a simple off and do the damage. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I, everybody was, you know, after a long time, thoughts so were with with Eric and, mm. and Hella, and uh, and it was just like, um, all you could do was just hope for the best. Yeah, exactly. That was it. No, do you, Do you remember much about the crash at all? Or was it just like a, a blur sort of? No, thing to I've uh, I've seen it twice, I think. Mm. I, I I just don't I don't like looking at those sort of things. No, no. Um, looking back at it, you know, um, same as when I you know go jumping ahead again when I've done my back, I've mm. seen it once or twice. Mm. Um, but um, no, you know that that happened, and then we you know you just gotta move on. Um, I mean I I in fact I I. Took over the uh, the Cradley captaincy from Eric. Oh right, okay. Then um, obviously he was mm. he was out then. Um, but obviously but, Craig, uh, Craig managed to win the um, the knockout cup that year as well. So that was obviously yeah, um, knockout a good cup. Thing, and know. we only just lost out on the league as well. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think we ended up third, wasn't it? But I think it was. Yeah, we we we. We had a chance to just to wind it up at some meeting and didn't get that. Then we didn't get another, and yeah, that was it, you know. Yeah, that was pretty um, good. But, um, yeah, what well, I'm just quite oh, uh, Yano got had a big injury, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He was he out was. for a while, mm -hmm. and then I had one which put me out of the uh, the final for Voyans, I think, or, or something along those lines. Uh, you know, the world championship rounds or yeah, something, yeah. I don't know. So, yeah. yeah. Um, accidents, you know, they, they happen. Yeah, it's, it's um, unfortunately it's just the black spot of the sport, really, or any motorcycle sport. It's a black spot, you know. Um, you know, you injuries. always you always think riders are going to get up, riders are going to uh, be okay, mm. or they, you know, they're just going to be a little bit sore for a few days. Mm. Um, it doesn't no, always happen. Something. No, and uh, you know, one of the nicest guys around Eric mm. you know yeah exactly but one good positive thing for yourself that year, you managed to win the burn up for the second time bonfire burn up in uh 89 so that win the what? sorry you broke up there managed to win the bonfire burn up right okay did I yeah okay. <laughs> <laughs> so another meeting he remembers 
<laughs> but, yeah, uh, that's, that's uh, the burnout was all right at the end of the year, November. Hmm. Generally, the, the last weekend of uh, October, first weekend of November, something like hmm. that. Uh, yeah, yeah, nice little border circuit down there, nice racetrack. Yeah, exactly. Enjoyed going down there. Very cold that time of year, but. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's it's the wrong sort of time to run run a meeting, isn't it? It's too cold. But no, but it yeah. was but it was a classic to obviously run with the Ace of Aces and and, and things like that. The two last yeah. big meetings of the year um, and things like that. I it was think, an annual event, yeah. Yeah, I don't think you managed to win the Ace of Aces. I think you no, came I close. Did, I, did, I think I did. I, did I second or third or something like that? I think that. it was second. You um, came, yeah. I I did it once. Oh, was it once? Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't do it again. I just thought the sport's dangerous enough as it mm. is without having flints thrown at you 80 <laughs> mile an hour or what it was you know yeah. you come away from that black and blue yeah you know uh so no i i, I did it once and I, so I'm, like, I'm never doing it again no um and it wasn't through not through anything like ian barkley put so much work into getting these machines to take the stones out and stuff but it's souls free you know mm. that the ground is made up of of Stones, flints, whatever. Talk. Yeah. Um, it's it was just unfortunate. Yeah, it was. I mean, I've got um, the footage of the bonfire burn up final um, here, which I might be able to jog a memory or two. Um, uh, well, where where am I? Uh, I think you're in the middle somewhere. Um, okay. it's, it's, it's hard to tell. You, what, what year is this? Uh, 89? 89, Yes, it's uh, eighty nine. So the second time you managed to win it, because you won it the first year in eighty seven. Yeah. Um, and uh, and things like that. But obviously, like I said, and Mark quoted me on this as well, is the fact that the burn up was like one of the biggest meetings of the year. All the spirit riders came out to have a go at it and uh, and things like that. So, but uh, yeah, I think you're there in the middle of the pack. Yeah, there you are. Just coming up the inside line now. Um, I think it's it might have been Marvin Cox in front of you. I think it might have been in this one. Um, and then you gradually roped him in because obviously it was a six lap grand final. In the burnout. Okay. But, wait, wait, uh, where am I here? I, I... You're second at the moment. Am I? You're currently in second place. Um, yeah. Okay. Like, yeah. Like, likes of Trevor Banks, Martin Hagen in the final. I think he was. I think, I think Clayton was in the final as well at this one. I'm not yeah. sure, but I think he made the final. Um, Clayton's generally going around the outside somewhere. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I said to him, you'd be a lot better if you just you know followed the rest of us. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you followed you, you might have done a bit better. <laughs> <laughs> But nice. um, um, uh, yeah, it, it was it was it was an annual annual meeting. Mm. Uh, as, as you know, you said Mark said it's you know it's one of the, the, the best meetings of the year. Yeah. Um, I I should have to have a look at some of these old uh, meetings. Yeah, they go up the inside line. I think I'm pretty sure it's Marvin Cox you just passed. Yeah, uh, that was Cox. Eh? Cox yeah. yeah. Yeah, so uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm thankful for, for, for Bob's videos because it's it's great to watch these old meetings back and share the memories and things like that as well and stuff. Yeah, but, uh, you know, and it, there's you obviously they go leg back straight out there. Yeah, you know, it, was, it, was, it was quite it was quite a, a grippy track by the look of it. Mm. I think I think Tunbridge was a, a, a grippy track apart from when yeah. it got wet because then it's, that's when it got wet, so to speak. You know. Yeah, yeah, because um, it, it was hard and just shiny, I guess. Then, yeah, it? I think I think it was, but um, yeah. Is it a six lap final. It's a six lap final, yeah. See, I'm, I'm getting tired just watching it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's the last lap you're on. But, uh, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm hanging off it now. <laughs> like, shit, where's that checkered flag? Yeah. <laughs> But uh, no, you say you managed to win that for the second time, which obviously, again, is a good thing to win because obviously, like I say, international meeting on the grass. Um, and yeah, like I that. really enjoyed my grass tracks. You know, it's like um, it's, it's, yeah, going back, same thing. It's what I grew up doing, and I enjoyed doing uh, grass tracks. Um, and uh, it was it was just the weekend and uh, you do do what you wanted in the, in the week. I mean, I was racing speedway, obviously, but you know, there were points where I thought, is it all worth it? Should I just like <laughs> nine to five and just do the grass cuts? Because you get disillusioned with the, the sport with different regulations coming in. Yeah. Points averages. Then they try to bring a, 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 a payment scale. Mm. Um, uh, one thing or another. And, and you, you, you you know, you, you, you're never at home. No. Um, and that's the, you know, it's, it, it's, it's you know, it, it's, it, it's great doing it when you're young, but you, you do miss out a lot on the, on the family. 
Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, and that, that that's the nucleus of Speedway is the family. You know, obviously they're the people who yeah. who keep you going and it makes you want to ride and things like that. But yeah. um, obviously moving on to the nine nineteen ninety season, um, I think that was again the season that was shaping up pretty good for yourself, um, doing well on the international front before you had your accident um, and things like that. I think I saw. I think I read somewhere that uh, Peter Oakes reckoned that you could have made the Bradford final that year because you were riding sort of that well that year. Yeah, I felt um, it was like 89, 90. Um, I know, it's, I suppose it's just confidence. I just felt invincible. I thought every race I'm going out for, I'm going to win it. Yeah. Um, we be it grass up, be it speedway, you know, it, it didn't matter. Mm. Um, and, you know, I won the um, the Golden Hammer at Cradley. Yeah. Um, I won that. And when was that? Because I I I I I'd had a second to Eric mm -hmm. in one year. I think I was it down there, eighty six. Yep. Then I had a third to Eric and Hans. You know, not by company. <laughs> no. In eighty seven, but yeah, I, I I won it. I won it in in ninety. And mm -hmm. um, things things were just they were going so well, and I I felt confident I could. I could, I could have, you know, lifted the trophy that year. Yeah. You know, it was just like, it was, it, I wasn't, I didn't doubt myself for, mm. for one moment. Yeah. Which is also uh, good to have, because obviously you have the self-confidence and everything sort of flows, you know, and things like that. I, yeah, it makes, it makes a difference, you know, it's like, uh, it, you do, you just like, just roll with it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But with the Golden Hammer, is it kind of true? Because I think I heard somewhere or I watched a meeting or whatever like that. Each race was sponsored and then whoever won the race got they got the sponsor's prize, whatever it was from like... A, yeah, different gifts and whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, a, like a washing machine or something like that. You oh, won, yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> you, 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 know, you, you can win a, a washing machine to a, I don't know, a dog basket or something. Yeah. You know, it, was, it was whatever the people wanted to put up. For. Actually, I've got... Hang just two seconds. Okay. Got it. Oh, very yeah. nice. It's very nice. Uh, it's, it's gone a bit tarnished. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. But, you know, that is, but that, that, that is a nice trophy to have. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as it, it was, that meeting was like a world final. Yes, yeah. They, they were, they, they, all the top guys are there. And um, if you're fortunate to, you know, to, to, to win it, it's like it's like a world final. Mm, yeah, exactly, exactly. But no, it's, I always found it but, funny because I think I I heard about that somewhere or read about it somewhere. I thought that, that was quite amusing to find that whoever sponsors it, you could win, like say, my dog basket, yeah. to a washing machine, to a hamper, or whatever like that. Yeah. I think you must have gone home with more things in your van than when you took there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see, you take another van to bring all your prizes back. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. But then, but then obviously, um, 1990 was the year where you had your accident. Um, yeah, well, the Golden Hammer was the last meeting before. Oh, was it? Oh, okay. yeah. I didn't realise. Oh, right. Yeah, that, that was the last meeting before I uh, went to um, uh, what's the name? Of the place? To, to Landshut in Germany, wasn't it? So for the for the for the pairs final. So um, yeah, that's it. Yes. Yeah. Name just fell out of my head. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So actually, oh, that was it. Yeah. Narrow track, long track, but narrow. Mm. Um, and made a great gate as normal. Um, so I've seen it uh, once or twice. Mm. Um, and Ronnie come out and not anything malicious or anything. Just turn the lights, put the bike down, mm. um, slid along the um, airbags stuff to woodwork with yeah. my coccyx. Yeah. Um, and what they say, what must happen? You hit it with your coccyx, and it and I just just it twisted at the same time, yeah. And that was it. I broke uh, T12, L1 and 2, yeah, exactly, which is obviously very very painful and i did you was there any sort of like specialist there then that would you, um, yeah you? well um there's 
uh, it was painful. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was painful. I had um, gas, gas and air uh, at the time. I just, I can't remember the pain, mm. but I can remember shit that was hurting then. Yeah, um, yeah. and I, I also I, I kept on trying to curl up into a ball, but I was supposed to not do that as to stay straight. Luckily enough, there was the spinal specialist from Munich Hospital yeah. was the doctor on the track. And it was like, I believe from now, he saved me from going to a wheelchair. Yeah, yeah, 100%. You know? Otherwise, if he wasn't there, and it could have been uh, an ordinary sort of doctor who wouldn't Maybe understood the industry. Or what, yeah, apparently he knew exactly that's what, what, what had happened. Mm. He knew immediately what had happened, not probably everything, but he knew he knew there was a problem with the spine. So that's why it took such a long time to get me off the track. Mm. Um, and the uh, they would they said they would they would they would have got a helicopter, but they didn't have a, any room to get the helicopter in to take me. So I had to do ambulance trip to, to Munich. <laughs> um, uh, my wife was there, obviously, yeah. um, and she she was she said she was stood with Clarky Richard Clark. Yeah. Yeah. we've been mates for donkeys years, and uh, Clarky says to her, "He'll get up. He'll be all right." Because it was so, so such a simple get up. Yeah, you know, she said, and she's like looking. She because she's only <laughs> like she's shorter than me. Right. <laughs> she's yeah. not tall. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, she said, no, she says, I always get, I know, I, if, if, it's, if I'm all right, I'll give her a signal. Mm. Yeah. That was it. Yeah, that, 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 there was no signal, sort of thing. There was no signal. Uh, um, but... Yeah, it was, it was a worrying time. Yeah, I can imagine it was. I mean, you sent me the pictures of the x rays. I mean, I can share them on here so people can actually understand the the sort of like the the injury you know it's in itself yeah. i mean there, there, there's the framework you you've you've had around, around that's the sport that's, and, that's still in there yeah and there's um, another, another side of it there but they actually fixed me with the screws and and that uh, what they, they had to fix me first because mm. it um because the spine was so twisted they had to fix me before they could actually go in and rectify things. Ah, uh, I see. Yeah. So yeah. Um, they they did that. I was I was put in a um, in a coma for five days, mm. um, and they um, they took a bone graft from my hip mm -hmm. to replace some of the bone in there, uh, and say they they said it's staying in now. It would be more risky to take it out than to just leave it. I uh, see. Yeah, fair enough. Um, and it, it is. It, it actually has. Uh, I don't know exactly where, but it, it has actually broke one or two of the screws. Mm. Um, now it said because most people know you, 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 your bone is is stronger, harder than your metal work. Yeah. Um, and it, uh, it, 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 it's a good sign mm -hmm. that my it's all fused to bed together well, you know. Yeah. I, you know, it's it's not really restricted. I I can still touch my toes and still do everything anybody else can do. Mm. Um, I uh, a little bit of a backache, but no more than someone just doing a bit too much gardening, you know. <laughs> gardening. Too much, that's it. <laughs> so, 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 it's like count my blessings. I'm so lucky I had the right guy there. Yeah. You know, exactly. it was. It, it was. It wasn't that difficult for me because I didn't know anything about it. I said I was five days in a coma, mm. and um, and we, we we got Daniel, our first child, first child, mm. and uh, so she was going home, flew home, because I was in the hospital for quite quite a time. I can't remember exactly how many yeah. how many yeah. uh, weeks or whatever. But I was. Uh, she flew home. And then flew back on the weekends, and then and then back again. Mm. Um, and first off, um, Hella was obviously there with Eric. Mm. Um, Hella stayed with Andrea mm. um, to 
just to be there for her. Yeah, support you in this sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's the sort of friends we, you know, we, we had it at Cravey, you know, it was just mm. like a family unit. Um, and uh, then I... <laughs> I, had to, I had a bit I used to smoke at the time before I uh, went in there and Andrea Andrea came in this one weekend and uh, she says the nurse the nurse says your your brother came in to see you and I'm like I ain't seen my brother or anything you know <laughs> and uh, I said yeah yeah some guy came in and it was it was Neil Evans <laughs> Yeah, Neil Levitz was was not far away for some meeting mm. and actually came to the hospital, mm. came in and he left a cigarette. Oh, did he? <laughs> he left a cigarette for me and uh, he said, he said, oh, I'm his brother. I, I was still in a coma. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and for, for ever, ever after, every time I used to see Neil, don't forget you owe me a fag. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah i mean that, that's another guy neil we 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 came up through schoolboy ranks together the same you know seven eight years old right the way through in the uh, grass track um yeah. so yeah i was and, and actually then i um there was a guy called otto weiss who used to sponsor yano yeah uh, and he had the engine tuning business mm. uh with, with the uh the speed rainer and he um uh, he had a flat near the hospital and he gave Andrea the flat just to have it for as long as you want, you know? Oh, that's good. That's... Um, and uh, so so it was the, the Speedway family helping each other out, you know? Yeah. And then when I come, when I uh, jump in there again, when I come, he actually sponsored me for, for a season. Mm. Otto did and that. Um, so, uh, yeah. It was a it was a funny old season that one. Yeah, you know, it was high, it was. highs, highs, lows. Um, but that's the way it goes. And everything in between, really, isn't it? By the sounds of it. So no, no, that was it. Yeah. But then obviously, uh, um, you obviously managed to get some sort of bug back then to come back to ride because obviously in ninety one you yeah, joined. Yeah, I, I, I must have been off my head. Yeah, you joined Middlesbrough. I think it was in ninety one. I um, uh, they great. Um, Patty said, uh, I said to Patty, I said, I think I might have a, another go. Mm. And it's like, Andrea's like, you know, she's always there, it's up to you, whatever you want to do, you know. So yeah. I was like, well, yeah, you know, come right towards the end of, end of the year. And um, as I say, Eric was, um, Greg was living with us. Yeah. So I said to Patty, let's have just a little, little spin again. So, so Eric says, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, okay, I'm getting all mixed up. Now. Yeah, you are. Yeah. Uh, I, I went up with Greg and we went to Craig Lake. Yeah. On a, uh, on a Monday morning, must be. Mm. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, the stadium. They had people working there and stuff. He, he, every. Empty the stadium, mm. uh, you want to do, you know. So I did about four or five slow laps. This is the first time I've been on a bike for over 12 months. And uh, I thought, right, okay, here we go. Went into mm. the pits corner, slid straight down on my ass. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, Jesus. It's all right. I've landed on my ass, which should be fragile, if you like. Yeah. Um, and uh, everything was okay. So then I thought, right, okay. So I got up and then then was fine, you know? It was just, it was actually a good thing that happened to to give it a little test. Yeah. And then um, Frank says, what do you want to do? Um, he says, I said, well, I said, I don't think I'm up to straight back in, you know? Because mm. um, I've been out for 12 months, not even got on a bike. He said, uh, all right, I'll see what I can do. And he said, um, Quite a long story short, do you want to go to Middlesbrough for a few meetings? So um, I said, yeah, go on. And I said, well, we'll do that. Mm. Uh, great bunch of people up there. Had a good time. A few, few, a few different tracks I'd not been to. Mm. And and some revisiting from way back in uh, 80, 82, 
283. Yeah. Yeah. So it's obviously nice then to obviously drop down the league and get your confidence back up, get some more laps on the yeah. basically basically like you say, it's just starting again, you know, just a bit further yeah. on in your career, yeah. you know, and stuff like that. Yeah. But um obviously, did you have a good season with Middlesbrough and your way back into it then? Um I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 I think I scored scored well. Mm. Um, yeah, I think it went okay. But um, I'm just trying to see if I brought anything down here. Blah, 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 blah. Mm. No, because uh, it was my testimonial year as well. That mm. was that year, so I had the testimonial. Um, but no, so it was just to, to, to slide back into it. Mm. Um, so then 92. Uh, back up and running at Cradley. Mm. Um, it's captain again. Um, and from then on, I just couldn't find find my form. Mm. Yeah, was it ever in the back of your mind then about the injury then at all when you did race and, or was it a case of that uh, you know? I, don't I know. say it wasn't. I say mm. it wasn't, but maybe there was something there. Mm. I just, I just could not. I just like I've been out of the saddle for, say, over twelve months, and I just could not get, get any consistency. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, because um, obviously, a back injury or any sort of injury like that is huge anyway. No matter what you do, sort of thing. Yeah. Obviously, it's always going to be back in your mind. A, a slide off, or like, like for example, you went to someone like um, Eastbourne or Arena or something like that, where you got to turn it a bit harder and things like that. You're going to feel it that bit more than we would do at someone like Coventry or Cradley or Kings Lynn or somewhere like that, where you can just let the let the bike sort of run really and stuff like that. Um, well, well to, to, to be honest, man, it, I, it, it didn't hamper me at all. No, um, no, I didn't. As I said, I just didn't get pain from it. Um, it was just, um, I don't know. I think it's it was up here, you know. Mm. It was just, I didn't think it bothered me, but maybe it did. Mm. Yeah. Um, but you know, we, we, I, I came back and then at the end of that season, I'm like thinking, what am I doing here? Mm. And I, I seriously thought about, it. I said to Pratt, I said. Think about it enough, mm. you know. Um, but, you know that, that's it. But anyway, uh, talked around the following year, and that was the season in '93 that um, Peter Narling came to to ride at Cradley. He did. He was that, that, that was '94. He went to Cradley. Oh, was it '94? <laughs> yeah, that was '94. Yeah. Oh right. <laughs> yeah, because he was still at Eastbourne in '93. <laughs> oh, that must have been the '93 season. That was the did the '93 season. Um, yeah. Couldn't get back up and running, then uh, decided to say to come to not to retire as I yeah, thought. Yeah. And then, but I had a great season with Peter, mm. great guy, great teammate. I actually rode in um, uh, the same team in, in uh, Sweden, in Smodern, yeah, as Peter, yeah. and, and we were teamed up there as well. Mm. So it's great. Uh, yeah. Really, really enjoyed the, the time with Peter. Mm. Yeah, from what I've I've seen, and everyone says obviously nice things about Peter and things like that. I've never spoken to him or anything like that. I've only ever seen him. I've ever watched him as a kid growing up around Eastbourne and things like that. But yeah, um, yeah I mean, he looked like a very smooth and textbook sort of kind of rider and all that sort of thing. An easy sort yeah. of like to get along with more than anything. Yeah, I mean, we 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 keep in touch a little bit. Mm. No, only only just like little messages, stuff like that, you know. He'll yeah. post a photo or something, and uh, I'll do the same. You know, it's it's, gen- it's I mean, it's more often not to do with bikes; it's to do with like out out with the kids somewhere or out <laughs> cycling yeah. or whatever. You know, uh, yeah. Or, uh, you know, yeah, just something along those lines. Mm. Yeah, and I think um, obviously ninety four again. I think it was a good year for Cradley. I think you had a solid finish in the league. I think you're quite high up in the league, about third or fourth, maybe. I think you were that year. Um, okay. But obviously the, um, the the cup final was against Eastbourne, which uh, uh, we we kind of nicely won for a change. <laughs> you know, we okay. we won the cup final and things like that. But um, obviously then moving on to ninety five was obviously a bad year for Cradley in itself because that was the year obviously where Dudley would close down. Um, did you guys know much about what was going on behind the scenes, or was you just racing every meeting like normal? No, we knew we knew it was it was hanging in the balance, mm-hmm. um, and you know uh, it's it's business. I mean, Derek and Nora um, 
have been my but Pratt has always been my boss, if you like. Yeah. Team manager. But they've always they're they're the ones that sign the checks. They've always been uh my the the, my, the big bosses. Yeah. Uh, but they've always treated us excellently. Uh, you know, it's like Nora, Nora, you know, like loaded and stuff. Every, every meeting after the um after the it's finished, you're going back to change room. There were there were plates home and away mm-hmm. for of sandwiches. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, di- different sandwiches and stuff. And she she makes those. She made oh, okay. those mm-hmm. and and had them brought down uh in cellophane. You had to get in there before Big Al used to get in there earlier <laughs> and hide some in his bag and stuff, you know. It, you know, kind of, it got a bit you got a bit um a bit hairy sometimes, you know, if you're gonna get sandwich or not. Yeah. Um and I, you know, um, and uh, you know, the, the healthy days. There used to be a crate of beers and stuff in there as well. And, of course, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, when when uh, I must have been about uh, when it was before we were married. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I must have been about nineteen or something like that. Mm, yeah. And I fractured my scaphoid. Oh yes, yeah. And uh, and I was out for a couple of weeks, and I was with my pet staff, and uh, we, we went to the crazy early wash and stuff. And Nora, this is uh, Derek Derek Pugh's wife. Yeah. She comes up to to me and Andrea, mm-hmm. and she says, uh, uh, "Just general chat. And why don't you get yourselves off on a on a holiday? Mm. You know, just for a, a week away somewhere. Because I'm not going to be able to do anything for you know a couple of weeks or more." Mm. Um, and we're like, oh, I don't know, you know, we, we just go with what we are. We're young kids, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and she says, uh, she says, go and sort a holiday out. Tell me how much it is. Oh, uh, okay, that's and, cool. Uh, and we're like, oh, you, well, okay, but like holiday. What do you mean, like Butlins or uh, <laughs> you know Blackpool or? Or what she says, well, what do you normally do? I said, Well, normally we go like end of season, we go to Canary Islands because mm. it's, it's sort of like November time, it's pretty much guaranteed, guaranteed sunshine. Yeah, so go to the Canary Islands. She says, Well, go and book a week up there, tell me how much it is. A fair play to her, told her, Here's a check, pay, pay for us to go to go on holiday. Nice, that's yeah, cool. This, you know, it was, it's not, it's it. Wasn't necessary. It was uncalled for. Mm. But again, that's crazy. Mm. You know, uh, they when they, you know, they they were getting in their you know, their, their late latter years. Yeah. Um, and so you know they they obviously have different things they want to maybe for you know for their family and grandkids or whatever you know. Um, so. Then and I think it was a lot to do with the more initially to do with the uh, Bridgewater family. Yes, yes. Who were the other owners that you know? It's one couldn't sell without the other. They wanted to sell, get out of it and stuff. So it that happens, you know. Mm. It's 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 business. Yeah, but it's you know, at the end of the day, it's business. That's what it is. It is, and it's just very unfortunate that obviously since then Crady's not been able to find a, a, a proper home I mean obviously yeah. with, with um, Dudley and things like that come back in the National League and you know track sharing at Birmingham and Wolverhampton's obviously kept the names yeah, how can you track share at Wolverhampton that would like no chance <laughs> no chance that's just um, you know not necessary though. but sometimes your best enemy could be your best friend as well so you know things like that you know it's, uh, it's stuff like yeah, that but I mean, yeah I mean the thing is you you, you why are there, um, I don't know, seven teams in the league or something like that now? Uh, in the top flight, it's about seven teams, yeah, but the national yeah, league is You're at the same track all the time, aren't you? Yeah, you are. It, you know? it's, it's unfortunate. Uh, it's just modern speedway in the UK and things like that, yeah. at the moment, which is very unfortunate. But no, I, I, I don't know how serious. The problem is that you know there, there, there was lots of talk, but there was never anyone going into their pocket to um, to get somewhere, you know? It yeah. could have been it could have been done, I imagine. 
Mm. You know, money talks, you, you get what you want. But uh, yeah, there's not lots of people who have plenty to say. Yeah. But wouldn't, you know, wouldn't or couldn't. Yeah, exactly. Um, help out, you know? Mm. Uh, but yeah, that's just the way it went. And go, go just made me think, um, going to the Canary Islands. Yeah. I mean, it's like, we, we've been in different years. Andrew and I, we go there and uh, we went with... Um, Met up with uh, Phil Collins and his girlfriend at the mm. time. Big Al, Lady Di <laughs> were there uh, another time. And then, uh, you know, we just arranged, right, where are we going to argue this year? Oh, we go there. Right. Well, you know, we just, like, hang out. Uh, more, Chris Morton as well and Jackie. Mm. Mm. There, you know, we met up. We, we arranged to meet up over there. So, you know, it was, it was, uh, it was great to spend time off the track. Yeah. As well, because uh, you know, later you, you know, you, you got one or two kids and, mm. and stuff, so uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's again, it's just like one big extended family, you know, things like that, you know, and and uh, and yeah. where you went, but um, before, obviously, um, I've got to show you a, a bit of Crayley, you riding for Crayley. This one is from uh, 95 when you were back at Middlesbrough. Um, this one, you're coming off uh, gate number two in this one. I think against uh, Shane Parker and Paul Bentley, and I'm not too sure. I think it might have been Scott Smith on the outside. So, um, yeah, I say, you know, riding at your old track here and uh, managing to come through. I think this meeting was actually quite a close meeting. I think it's the Middlesbrough just pipped you in, in the Where's, the where's that? Where's Middlesbrough. That? Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough, okay. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you say, riding well for Cradley, you know, like you did every week in, week out. But, yeah. Uh, also, also ran the old uh, the 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 front spoiler as well. Yeah, front know. front spoiler. I mean, it was okay until you had a um, deep track and a lot of shale yeah. actually hit it, um, and it didn't. Uh, yeah, it was just something you tried, something different. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I was one of the first to have one. My bike was actually that was ninety. That was ninety six when I went to Coventry. Yeah, I had the actual hot the. The top of the bike was a carbon fiber uh unit that sat on the bike yeah seat yeah. all in it and stuff yeah mm. yeah which yeah. obviously the likes of um billy hammer went to later on in their career you know that's with it the, yeah. With the carbon fiber yeah and that sort of thing but uh yeah and i mean it's just it's just nice to see you riding and doing well in, the, in a crazy race jacket you know keep the fans happy again yeah. <laughs> you know? but um yeah like, like, like you said you're on the move in for 96 which obviously will find out to be your last two seasons in 96 and 97 at coventry yeah. um and obviously then crazy in 96 went to stoke and became crazy in stoke um was that sort yeah. of a move that you didn't want to do did you fancy just going somewhere different or was it yeah just... I did, um i should have just called it a day yeah, you know, I, I I'd lost the interest. I got you know, it's just like here we go again. Mm, yeah, another meeting. You know, um, it was um, I just couldn't see going up every Saturday up the M5, M6, shit loads of traffic. I'm to leave at like midday to get there at six o'clock. You know, for and, and you get back in like an hour and a half sort of thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, I thought, I don't want to be doing that. And then Coventry come in, and I think, oh, I hate Coventry. <laughs> yeah. I don't like it, you know? It's just like, yeah. it's so slick and not a racetrack. And uh, so, anyway, it's, I thought, oh, well, it's on my doorstep. Might as well do it, I'll, yeah. I'll go and uh, have, a, have a few laps and that, but... Um, it it didn't really work out. It was it, I I done them in the, an injustice really because it, you know I, I I I should have just hung up my leathers there and there, uh, going back to leathers again. Uh, yeah. was, um, <laughs> there and then. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, just looking at I've got um, some stats on your averages and your first year at Coventry, you're on a seven point average. Um, which is obviously just a, a bit below than what you were when you be signed for them because you finished at Craden on a nine point average when you finished Craden in 95. So, yeah. um, and then obviously 97, you could see that sort of like maybe the enthusiasm was going a bit because you've went down to a five point average, yeah, in, uh, in 97. Yeah. So, you know, but you know, obviously, like you say, you're winding down because obviously you want to, I, still, I, you still... know, I, I, you don't, it's like going to work, you don't want to be there, no, exactly. Um, and unless it didn't go right, well whatever yeah you, you know, know. 
Yeah, but then obviously, yeah, obviously yeah. yeah. But obviously, on the flip side, you were still doing the grass track because obviously, I think you carried on for uh, maybe a couple of more years after you finished yeah, speedway. Yeah, carried, carried on with the grass track, uh, which again, it was it was okay. It was um, it was a certain number of good meetings. Enjoyed mm -hmm. it again, you know, just just the weekends and that. But then it was in the year two thousand. We were we were at a grass track in England. Yeah, and. Um, so my, my dad was mechanic for me, which he pretty much always did with the with the grass track. Um, my eldest Daniel um, was there. He was eight years old, I think then. Um, no, he would have been no. He's uh, eight, eight, so he, he, twelve years old. Mm. Um, and uh, I was, I think, I was second in this this race. Yeah. Everything was going yeah. fine, having a good day. And uh, I felt, I, my mind was like, so what am I going to do tomorrow? What are we having for dinner? That sort, that sort of thing, you know, going yeah. to your bed. And I'm like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> and so I, li I literally pulled out of that race there and then. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, I pulled out. I went, rode back into the pits. And I said to my dad, I said, that's it, I've had enough. Oh, fair enough. And and he, and he says, oh, all right, since so, you know, next weekend we're wherever, you know, it's no way. It, that, that's something that's my parents have been there a hundred and whatever percent, mm. but they've never forced me to do it schoolboy days and stuff, you know. Yeah. Uh girls yeah. they never forced me if I want to ride, I ride, and if I don't, I don't, you mm. know. Um, so yeah, I went in and I said, that's it, I've had enough. And it's like, right. yeah, okay, next weekend. No, that's it, I've finished. Yeah. And my wife tells me this story because <clears throat> I obviously didn't hear it, but she turns, she turned around, he turned around to my dad, his granddad, oh, uh, yeah. to uh, look at him, looks look, looks back at uh, Andrea and says, What's granddad gonna do at weekends? <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> you know, it, it wasn't it wasn't the fact that dad's giving up. Yeah. What's, 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 grand, what's granddad gonna do? <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're worried about what, you, what your dad's was gonna do, then uh, what yeah. you were gonna do. <laughs> so yeah. I, think, bro, I like that, that's cool. That that's was good. great, you know. So, thankfully, you know, dad Dan didn't want to he, he I think he'd seen me hurt a few times. He didn't really want to go into mm. Um, so, but then we got we got Jordy now. Mm. He's uh, he's got the bug. He <laughs> he went he went back to England to do a football coach. He, he was at college at Hartbury College, mm. uh, sports college. It is. He he done his first year's uh, football coaching badge. So then he uh, he goes back a little bit after to go and do his second badge. Mm. Um, and he's been there since. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, he's found himself a, 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 um, a young lady, mm -hmm. um, and he's, I don't know if he's coming back or he's not. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, he's um, he actually my two fifty that I rode back in. What did I say? It was eighty two or oh, something yeah. like that. Yeah. It was basically just chucked out outside the garage at my dad somewhere. It ended up underneath a, um, a lorry bed because the actual garage I had was turned into a into a house, a bungalow. Okay. And so okay. my dad bought a, a lorry, big lorry Arctic back, mm. and put all the stuff out of there into okay, just to store yeah. it. And the bike went underneath there, wasn't mm. clean from the last meeting. Bits pinched off and that. So Jordy phones me. I said, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna rebuild. I'm giving myself a project. Your bike." Mm. I'm like, "Okay." Next thing, cut on soy short. I'm gonna race it. What? <laughs> Hang on a minute. Yeah. So, so he's actually, he's actually rode my bike exactly the same bike. Mm. Um, that was uh, last last year, mm. last year or year before. Um, doing a couple of grass tracks, but now he's he sort of gives that up. He's, he's bought a 140 now, yeah. And they got 140 class at uh, mm. school boys now, yeah. um, so yeah, he, he's, he's he's just doing it for a bit of fun, you know. Um, so I said, well, you make sure you don't hurt yourself because he's 
Him and his girlfriend are expecting in September. Mm. Um, and my eldest is expecting our second grandchild in June. So it's all good. babies all this year, <laughs> but we can't get back. This no. bloody virus, you know, I've not seen my dad or, or uh, the two sons. My daughter's still here at home. Uh, can't get rid of her. Uh, but, <laughs> uh, no, are you joking? Yeah. Um, so we haven't, we haven't seen them for uh, not last Christmas, the Christmas before. Oh, geez. It's yeah, um, been over a year then. Yeah, so, so. yeah looking for, you know, to see, see our kids and our grand, you know, our granddaughter, um, Poppy, uh, to, to get back there. But we will. We will when it's all up and running. Yeah, well, fingers crossed, mate. You know, you know, it yeah. will sort itself out eventually. I know it will do. But um, no, not last time I went back was um, we. It was just at the start of the 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 virus coming into into the uh, into take you know whatever it's doing. Mm. Um, we flew we flew to Manchester. Some friends of ours, and Nigel and Helen, uh, a United supporter. Yeah. So I flew in to, to go watch a match. Mm. I was a season ticket holder, so we got tickets sorted and stuff. Uh, while we're there, Clark, uh, Clarkie says, you, um, you're going to UK. Tell them where we're going. Oh, I'm going up to see... Uh, to see you remember he did a piece on more for... Um, yes. Uh, the stadium and all the goings on and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember so, that. So we went, I'm going to see more then. So we got in touch with more. So we went up there, watched some match, all had a couple of days together, a few beers with the more, you know, I've seen yeah. more uh, for a while and stuff, and Jackie, Larky, uh, long weekend, and then and then we're back. <laughs> Brilliant. So, so it's great, you know, we can go we can go a lot of places to see to see people that you, you know you've not seen just to keep in touch. Yeah, and nowadays I think it's become more and more important that you keep in touch with people. Uh, yeah. So obviously I think that's one of these things that this uh, pandemic has taught a lot of people is just to keep in contact with everybody. Make sure. Yeah, so make- this this thing, you know, mm. uh, the you know we use it like as we're using it today uh, to this evening. Mm. It's like using it with the family and stuff, and and with with your grandchildren, just so your face is familiar to them and stuff. Oh, and yeah. You can see, it's all right, telephone, but you just don't see any expression. No, exactly. It's, it's, hard, it's hard to tell what the other person's thinking uh, on a telephone than you do on a, on a, on a Zoom call or FaceTime yeah. or, or whatever yeah, it's nowadays. Like, it's, it's like, yeah, I miss you too. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, looking forward to seeing you. But, <laughs> yeah. You, know, <laughs> you can't do that when it is like that. No, you can't, you can't hide this, type, this side of it all. But, <laughs> no. Um, but yeah. no, but um, anyway, Simon, we must wrap it up tonight. It's been fantastic talking to you about, about racing nice. and everything. Last so. time I saw you is when you came over to... Uh, the Talbot in Ledbury. I did. I drove all that way to pick up two race jackets. You know, <laughs> two race jackets and uh, have a have a pint. Yeah, yes, nice yeah. But um, hopefully, you know, we can maybe when you come over to the UK again, we can arrange a date and uh, we, can, we can hang out and just talk speedway or whatever. You know, maybe we can arrange. Something. Yeah, yeah. Or, or if you get, you know, up to spec on football. What's, what's football? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, no, it's been it's been a pleasure. I hope. Uh, I hope I've been, you know, uh, a little bit informative with uh, with anybody who tunes in to watch it. Yeah, I'm, sure, uh, I'm sure you'll get a lot of people tune in to watch it because there'll be like a lot of, like I say, like a lot of crazy fans. I know they, they. I've had Lance on the show. I've had BP <laughs> on the show. Um, yeah. And the, all the crazy fans love it. You know, they'd love to see a different side to everything. And yeah, um, you I know. That's so why I saw BP. I said um, he hasn't got a golden hammer, has he? No, he hasn't. No, he hasn't. But then, again, but, then, but then again, he's got two world championships. But we keep quiet about that one. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> yeah, exactly, mate. But anyway, Simon, um, thanks for tonight, mate. Um, uh, pleasure. I must, I must say to everybody, though, to continue to like and subscribe to the YouTube channel on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, share this all around. Um, the comments I've been receiving has been fantastic for all the shows I've done so far um, and things like that. And hopefully you've enjoyed listening to Simon tonight. You know, it's uh, hearing different sides to it, unfortunately. Again, yeah, it certainly helps, sir. Yeah, well, I think it's been very informative. You know, <laughs> that's how my my knowledge grows. Good. But um, anyway, Simon, cheers for your time <laughs> tonight, mate. Okay, all right. Take care, buddy. You're welcome. Uh, uh, sometime soon.